Chapter 2276, Hellbridges Mr. White explained that bird is called the death crow. It leads the living through the cycle of death. It might seem like a dead end, but it is certainly a road we will be able to survive. This is the only bridge, out of the thirteen of them, that can lead us safely to the other side. Going through life and death, Ian and Yang, the sacred leader was a very unique individual. If I hadn't researched the sacred leader's life and learned that he was reborn nine times, I would have never have assumed that this was the correct path to take. You are very smart, Mr. White. Even the sacred leader's secrets are known to you, murmured a woman's voice. Hansen and Mr. White both jerked in surprise. They turned around and saw Fox Queen approaching from behind. She had caught up to them very quickly. Mr. White's face looked glum. Clearly, he had never imagined that Fox Queen would catch up with them so quickly. If she didn't possess Mr. White's skill at calculating the correct path, it shouldn't have been possible for her to simply guess the correct way each and every time. There was no way she should have been able to follow them. Suddenly, Mr. White seemed to understand something. He looked down at his own body. Fox Queen laughed. You don't need to look. I left a spray on you, a specific scent that only a shape-shifting fox could follow. Fox Queen then ignored Mr. White, who was now looking green in the face. She stared at Han Sr., good brother, we meet again. Did you miss your big sister? I sure missed you. Han Sin was gripping the bird's nest tightly as he started to step away. He was next to the hell bridge. He smiled at her. I missed you, big sister, but I would have been happy never seeing your face again. Fox Queen smiled and said, in that case, you must be disappointed. But since we're both already here, Shouldn't you do something nice for your big sister who cares so much about you? You want this? You mean? Hansen pulled out the stone plate. He held it comfortably in one hand. Fox Queen's eyes brightened, and she smiled. Little brother, you really do understand your big sister so very much. You are so cute. I really didn't want to brutally murder you. If you give it to your big sister, how about I keep you alive? Sure, but if you want it, you will have to chase me. If you catch me... I will give it to you, Hansen said. Then he stepped onto the hell bridge with the blood Kieran. The muscles in Fox Queen's face tensed, but it was too late to stop Hansen now. She flashed forward to the bridge, but she didn't have the guts to step on it. Mr. White was shocked, and he shouted, Come back. You cannot go across the hell bridge. Mr. White knew he was wasting his breath, though. The hell bridge meant hell power, and just like he had explained, it was a force from a different dimension. The moment Hansen had stepped onto the bridge, he had entered a new dimension. No matter how loudly Mr. White shouted, he knew Hansen couldn't see or hear him anymore. Mr. White, is there any way we can walk this bridge? Fox Queen was staring at Hansen and the Blood Kieran. Even deified elites might die there. Do you really think he can pull through? Mr. White had a wry smile. What a shame. Fox Queen looked at Hansen and sighed. She didn't know if she was feeling remorse over the loss of Hansen himself or the stone plate she coveted. Mr. White, you can go on ahead, Fox Queen sad distractedly, gesturing dismissively at him. Mr. White felt glum. He looked at crime, then at the black bridge of life and death. Fox Queen watched Hansen for a while longer, then stepped onto the life and death bridge. When Hansen had stepped onto the hell bridge, his vision changed almost immediately. He had been able to see the end of the bridge clearly, but once he set foot on it, things changed. The bridge stretched on and on without an end in sight. Aside from the bridge and the lake, nothing else occupied his vision. Hansen couldn't see the other twelve bridges or any of the teleporters. He couldn't see Fox Queen or Mr. White. It was as if the bridge was residing in a plane of existence, all on its own. Furthermore, the Hell Ghost statues on the bridge came alive, and they all looked like real devils. They hunched atop the rails, and their purple eyes glared at Hansen as if they were going to swallow him alive. Their bodies were wreathed in purple fire, and there were so many of them that the whole bridge was wreathed in a chain of purple flames. It was an unsettling sight. Hansen held up the bird's nest as he went along. He looked as far down the bridge as he could, but he couldn't see the Grand Hell Ghost statue and Isha in the middle anymore. Hansen gritted his teeth. He clutched the bird's nest tight and moved forward with the blood Kieran. Hansen believed Isha must have had a reason for selecting the hell bridge. Plus, Fox Queen was there. That meant Hansen didn't really have a choice in the matter. Walking across another bridge with her on his heels might have been more dangerous. Hansen moved slowly down the bridge, holding the bird's nest defensively. 
The hell ghost atop the rail continued to stare at him, their eyes following him as he walked. They leered at Hansen and the blood Karen. Perhaps they were scared of Hansen's bird's nest, and that was why they had decided not to follow. They simply stared at the pair. Hansen walked along the bridge for a while, but he soon started to feel poorly. Hansen had the bird's nest protecting his body, but he noticed that something ominous was still happening to him. The bird's nest is unable to block the hell bridge's power? Hansen looked down at his body, and also the body of the blood Kieran. He frowned. He and the blood Kieran were dyed purple. The further he walked, the deeper the color became across his skin. The blood Kieran had previously looked red, but not even it could block the dying effect of that purple color. Although Hansen couldn't tell how the purple air might affect their bodies, it obviously wasn't something that boded well. Hansen stopped. He used his blood pulse sutra and his jade skin, but he couldn't remove the purple air from his skin. And although they had stopped, the purple air continued to grow stronger. Hansen summoned his gold demon bug king by Sima, but that proved to be useless too. The purple air was still able to penetrate the gold demon bug king by Sima and die him and the blood Kirin. Hansen looked at the egg that the little red bird had turned into. There was no purple air permeating it, and that made Hansen feel a little relief. If the little red bird's egg wasn't infected, then that meant there might be a way to deflect the force. It wasn't invulnerable. Hansen looked back and noticed that he could no longer see the way he had come. There was no end, and Hansen gritted his teeth. Chapter 2277 One in a Billion Chance the hell ghosts on both sides stared coldly at Hansen and the blood Kieran. They were like a crowd gathered to watch a funeral procession. It didn't seem as if they wished to do anything to stop the intruders, though. As Hansen continued to walk, he thought about his situation. Those who are outside of this bridge can see what is actually going on, so the hell ghosts really are just statues. They only appear to be alive because I am on the bridge. It could be just a feeling or the adverse effect of some type of power that gives them the appearance of life. The hell ghosts aren't attacking us, but they might be configured to release power of some sort. If this line of thinking is correct, then how did Isha end up in the clutches of that menacing statue? Does that mean there is one hell ghost statue that is actually a living being? Hansen wondered. He and the blood Kieran continued to walk across the bridge. The purple stain in their skin deepened as they went, but the way ahead of them was still clear. The purple jade bridge reached on without an end in sight. That purple air didn't seem to be affecting their bodies, but it made Hansen rather worried all the same. These purple airs might be part of a process to build up power. The more that is gathered, the stronger the inevitable explosion would be, Hansen thought to himself. Because the jade bridge's length had been extended by the distorted dimension, Hansen rode the blood Kieran as it sprinted at top speed for over a hundred hours. Only then did they finally see the middle of the bridge coming up. Just as it had appeared on the outside, Isha had been grabbed by a giant, evil hell ghost. The sight was quite different now that Han Sin was standing on the bridge, though. The giant hell ghost wasn't a statue in this place. It was an actual creature. It had purple skin and wings, and its head had a pair of purple horns that looked like bullhorns. Its body was like a wild monkey. It gripped Isha tightly, and its eyes were shining with purple light. Queen. Hansen shouted at Isha as he rode closer to her on the blood Kieran. When Hansen had called to her from outside the bridge, Isha had been unable to hear him. Now that they were in the same dimension, Hansen thought he might be able to get her attention. Isha slowly started to open her eyes. She rolled her head over to look at Hansen, but it was clearly a struggle in her weakened state. As she saw Hansen coming across the bridge, Isha's expression became strange. She stared at him for a while as if she was trying to determine whether Hansen was real or just a delirious fantasy. My queen, are you okay? Hansen shouted as he came toward her. The statue that held Isha didn't behave as if it had heard Hans Senator, it just continued to hold Isha, as if it hadn't noticed Hansen and the blood Kieran. Why are you here? Isha whispered. Hansen could tell that she could barely summon the strength to speak. It's a long story, we can talk about it later. But tell me, how can I help you? Hansen asked. Isha shook her head. You should find a way to save yourself. Your body has collected a lot of that hellish air. If you don't leave, the hell ghost will soon see you. And when that happens, it will be too late for you to run. Get off of this hell bridge, and you might find a way to survive. You selected the hell bridge for a specific reason, yes? Hansen asked. It didn't look as if he intended to leave any time soon. 
Do not waste time talking to me about this. Get lost. Isha scolded him with a frown. I'm not the only one here. There is a deified elite waiting for me, and she is my enemy. Even if I do make it out of here, I'm just going to end up dead, Hansen said with a shrug. Isha looked surprised. She quietly said, you are a magnet for trouble. Whatever, then. Since you are here, let's try something out. Maybe we can both live through this. My lady, you have a way to get out of here? Hansen asked. Isha smiled and said, I selected the Hell Bridge so I could use the Hell Power to activate my rebate Elder Blood. That way, I could become deified. But I failed. Since you are here, perhaps you can help me try again. The success rate is low, but it is certainly worth a try. How do I help? Hansen quickly asked. Isha took a deep breath and slowly said, I told you before, our rebate elder used to be a servant for an important person amongst the extreme king. That man was called Hell King. He had a Hell God body, and it possessed an intense Hell power. Isha began coughing and had to take a deep breath before continuing her speech. Because he treated our elder very nicely, Hell King put some of his Hell King blood into her body. So, that way, our elder could one day become deified and create teeth power. It was all because of Hell King's blood. Regrettably, the Hell King blood I possess is too weak. The rebate elder was given a powerful gift, but she didn't possess the blood naturally. When it was passed from child to child, it became weaker with every generation. After so many years have passed, the Hell King blood is so light that it might not even exist anymore. I wanted to use the Hell power to activate the Hell King blood, but it proved to be too difficult. Either that, or the blood has vanished completely. Isha looked at Han Sr., but now, even though this is a one in a billion chance, we have to take it. However, I have no power, and so I will have to make use of your power. If it doesn't work, you and I will die here together. If you don't want to take this risk, you should leave now while there is still time. How can I help you? Hansen repeated. If Hansen didn't save Isha, it wouldn't matter if he made it to the other side of the Hell Bridge alive. Fox Queen would be waiting. If he was able to help Isha become deified, things might turn out differently. Isha was his teacher. If he saved her, Isha would probably help him get the sacred leader's legacy treasure. And with a deified elite next to him, he would no longer have to fear Fox Queen. Isha sighed. She looked at the hell ghost that had grabbed her and told Hansen, this ghost statue is the key to this entire hell bridge. All the power of the hell bridge stems from this. If I can get its blood, perhaps then I can become deified. Isha took a deep breath and went on to say, it is not living, by the way. It is just a statue with hell blood. It is currently attracted by my power, and so most of its power is focused solely on me. You can use this opportunity to break its body and collect the hell blood. Help me become deified. The success rate is so low though. Chapter 2278 Unbreakable Statue Plus, I know that there is hell blood in the statue, but I don't know where it is concentrated. And since you are still so weak, I'm not even sure you can damage it. On top of that, even if I do get the hell blood, the success rate of activating my own hell blood is low. That is why I have told you it is a one in a billion chance. If you have a method of escape, I suggest you make use of it now. By the time Isha finished speaking, her face had grown even paler. Hansen turned to face the statue, then he activated his purple eye butterfly. If he wanted to live, he needed Isha. He didn't want to watch her die, either. If there was a way to save her and resolve his own dire situation by extension, he wanted to try. It was killing two birds with one stone. But as Isha had said, it was a dangerous thing to attempt. If they failed, there was a very high chance he could die. If Hansen's strike didn't work, the ghost statue might attack him in return. Fortunately, Hansen had the bird's nest to defend himself. With a shield like that, he didn't have to be afraid. Plus, he had the blood kirin. Even if his own power couldn't break the body of the ghost statue, the blood kirin strength might be enough. But before he could allow the blood kirin to attack, Hansen first needed to locate the hell blood inside the ghost statue. And when he had located it, he had to ensure success in a single hit. He didn't know if he would be given a second chance. The purple eye butterfly kept analyzing the ghost statue. Hansen detected many mysterious substance chains wrapping around and through the statue. Those substance chains were very complex, and they were difficult to understand. But Hansen didn't have to understand how the ghost statue was made. All he had to do was locate the point where the hell blood was stored. 
Through the Dongshan aura and purple eye butterflies combined analysis, Hansen's eyes eventually brightened. It's there. When Hansen looked at the ghost statue's eyebrow, he noticed there was an extra tight substance chain. The purple substance was so thick that he could not detect a single seam. Blood Kirin, attack here. Hansen lifted his Thunder God spike and took aim at the ghost statue's eyebrow. The Blood Kirin was carrying Hansen, and the beast glowed with red light. Blood air swirled around to cover its entire body. It loosed a thunderous roar before leaping up at the ghost statue's eyebrow. Yisha was surprised as she watched her student. She was too weak to participate, and it was only now that she noticed the beast that Hansen was riding. It was a scary half-deified being, she could tell. It wasn't an ordinary half-deified creature, either. It had to be at the very top of what was achievable in that class. Yisha was surprised Hansen was able to command such a powerful mount. The sight gave her a little bit of hope to cling to. A xenogeneic that was almost as strong as her might be able to crack the ghost statue and retrieve the hell blood she required. While Isha was mulling this over, the blood Kirin's claws were tearing through the fabric of space. The beast lashed out at the ghost statue's forehead, sending a vicious attack against the statue's brow. But suddenly, the ghost statue shone with purple light. Before Han Sin and the blood Kirin could react, the statue's other hand grabbed the blood Kirin, just as it had Isha. Its sharp nails dug into the blood Kirin's flesh. The blood Kirin let out a horrendous screech. The statue's talons easily punched through the creature's tough scales, and they were digging in deep. Hansen was saved by the fact that the ghost statue's claws only went for the blood Kirin. He tumbled to the surface of the bridge. Looking up at what had occurred, he was given a shock. Without a doubt, the ghost statue's power was deified. Even the blood Kirin couldn't fight it off. The powerful creature was in the statue's hand, and no matter how much the blood Kirin tried to struggle, it could not pry itself free from the claws. The blood Kirin kept squirming in a bid to get free, but that only made the claws sink in deeper. Blood seeped out in greater and greater volume. Isha looked depressed. She had underestimated the statue's cunning. She thought she was pulling the attention and power of the ghost statue's power, but now, she realized that the ghost statue had more power than she initially assumed. The power it had used to attack the Blood Kirin was as great as anything she could unleash herself. Blood Kirin, don't move. Hansen shouted up at the Blood Kirin from where he stood on the bridge. The Blood Kirin, upon hearing Hansen's voice, stopped squirming and resigned itself to the pain it was already feeling. When the Blood Kirin stopped fighting the ghost statue, the powers of the ghost statue's claws seemed to lessen. D asterisk a minute. Now I understand. It wasn't because Isha and the Blood Kirin weren't strong enough. The thing attacked them because they have hell power already. Hansen looked at his own purple body and the purple air. The ghost statue wasn't a creature. Just as Isha had said, it was indeed a statue. And inside its body was a pocket of hell blood. That was the source of its strength. While it did have a lot of power, it lacked intelligence. It didn't make plans or schemes. It did the job it was programmed to do. It was the hell power inside Hansen that would cause the statue to act. If Hansen used his power, the hell power that was now inside his body would be triggered. And the ghost statue, in turn, would be prompted to make its move. The events would play out like falling dominoes. Unless Hansen could get rid of the hell power, not even a deified elite could block the ghost statue's attack. Once enough hell power accumulated within Hansen's body, the ghost statue would attack him even if he didn't act first, just as it had been for Isha. When she walked across the bridge, she hadn't attacked the ghost statue, but the statue still grabbed her. That was why she was unable to evade it. Hansen and the Blood Kirin hadn't activated the ghost statue when they walked near it because of the bird's nest. Hansen had thought that the bird's nest was ineffectual against the hell power, but it actually had gotten rid of some of it. That was why the hell power in Hansen and the Blood Kirin hadn't triggered the ghost statue to attack the moment they walked up to it. Hansen suddenly felt a headache coming on. The problem was no longer getting the hell blood from the statue, it was the fact that he couldn't even hit the ghost statue. If Hansen used a certain amount of power, then the hell blood that had accumulated in his body would be triggered. Then, the ghost statue would come after him. He wouldn't be able to escape if he was struck by it. Just go. Isha was smart and she understood the issue as well. She knew she couldn't escape her predicament. Once their bodies were infected by hell powers, all hope of defeating the ghost statue was lost. The same would be true even if a deified elite joined them. 
Hansen stared at the ghost statue and did not speak. He didn't want to simply leave. He hadn't saved Isha yet, and now the blood Kirin had been captured as well. There was no way Hansen was going to throw in the towel and call it quits now. Hansen was holding the Thunder God Spike. The wings on his back flashed, and he teleported in front of the ghost statue. But the instant he got close enough to strike, the fist that was holding Isha slammed into him. Ping. Hansen used the bird's nest to protect himself, but he was still sent flying. He flew in a long arc that ended with a crunching impact with the hard surface of the bridge. Hansen's body was like a meteor thudding into the earth. He might not have broken the bridge, but the same could not be said for his body. He coughed, and blood sprayed the ground in front of him. Chapter 2279 A Needle Because Hansen had used a fair amount of his own power, it activated the hell power in his body. The ghost statue came to life and flapped its wings. It rose above Hansen, then dropped like a hawk, its feet outstretched to grab Han Sr. There was no way he would be able to dodge. The ghost statue was drawn toward Han Sen's hell power like a magnet. When its feet came down, they were going to smash Han Sen into a pulp. The statue fell, and its claws closed around Han Sr. Dong! The ghost statue's claws grabbed the bird's nest and tried to crush it. They failed. Hidden safely under the bird's nest, Han Sen felt a modicum of relief. If the bird's nest was able to withstand the attacks of the ghost statue, then that meant he had a chance to fight back. Perhaps being under the cover of the bird's nest calmed Han Sen's hell power. Regardless of the reason, the ghost statue released the bird's nest and returned to its spot atop the pillar. Hansen spent a while thinking. He cast his jade skin power and threw a punch at the ghost statue. Jade skin's power might be perfect for this work. Perhaps using that power wouldn't trigger the hell power within Han Senator, maybe he could avoid waking up the ghost statue. But that line of thought soon proved to be naive. As soon as Hansen teleported, he was sent flying again. Fortunately, he had the bird's nest to absorb some of the blow. With its help, he was able to avoid death once more. But even so, Hansen was still bleeding a lot by this point. Teeth power. Suppress evil. Turtle skill. Under the sky knife skill. Lone bamboo sword skills. Thunder power. Fire power. Ice power. Hansen used all the powers he could remember, but each one proved to be useless. No matter what power he summoned, the ghost statue would break it. Hansen couldn't touch the horrid thing, and it kept tossing him aside like a toy. If it wasn't for the aid of the bird's nest, he would have been killed many times. Even with the bird's nest for protection, his impacts with the bridge had injured him. His wounds might not have been as bad as they looked, but they did look very bad. Stop trying. Just go. Isha growled. She was feeling a complex mixture of emotions. Hansen had that bird's nest for protection, so he had some measure of protection from deified attacks. If there was a deified elite around, though, his ability to escape wasn't guaranteed. But Hansen was taking so many risks in his attempts to free her that Isha couldn't help but feel touched. Isha didn't believe she had treated Hansen all that well. She had simply given him resources. And she had only taken him as a student because of a bet she had once struck with the psychic. It was only afterward that she realized that having Hansen as a student wasn't all bad. When she realized that she had a student who would fight for her in a situation as dire as this, it was difficult not to feel touched. Isha would never have considered that Hansen might be doing this because he didn't want to lose an advantage. Her life being at stake was only a small part of it. Hansen wasn't going to lose Isha and a half deified blood Kirin. That was why he kept trying and trying. He didn't want to lose so much. Hansen had the bird's nest, so he wasn't going to die easily. That's why he kept trying. But the results of his attacks were not encouraging. Hansen tried every trick in the book, but none of his powers could overcome the ghost statue's power. The ghost statue responded to hell power far too well. It was like cause and effect. If Hansen had hell power, it meant he was going to get hit by the ghost statue. There was no other possible outcome. In all his attacks, Hansen hadn't touched the ghost statue's forehead once. Thinking about getting the hell blood out of the ghost statue's forehead was useless, because he couldn't. As Hansen kept trying and getting knocked back, even his armor was dyed red by the blood that spilled from him. Isha's expression looked pained. The ghost statue struck Hansen again and sent him crashing down into the bridge once more. This time, though, he stayed hidden beneath the bird's nest for a while. Are you dead yet? If you're not, then get lost. 
Isha shouted angrily, but her eyes shimmered. Hansen didn't move. He was hiding under the bird's nest, thinking about how he might break the hell power, or the connection between it and the ghost statue. I have used all of my powers at least once, and even so, I haven't been able to land a hit. The only possibility remaining is to use my super god spirit body. By using my super god spirit body, I can remove the hell power and avoid being harmed by the ghost statue. But if I do that, then Isha will know that I am Dollar. This is bad. Hansen felt depressed. After everything he had been through, though, seeing Isha and the blood Kieran get killed was the last thing he wanted. He needed to try this, even if it meant exposing his identity. As Hansen was thinking, Isha shouted, Hansen, are you dead yet? Get out of here if you aren't. My queen, why would one like myself die so easily? You underestimate the fortitude of your students. Hansen placed the bird's nest on his head like a hat as he spoke to Isha. His body and face were drenched in blood. And with the bird's nest on his head, although it was a very sober situation, it looked rather funny. Isha's lips were shaking, but after a brief while, they returned to a cold stare again. She looked at Hansen, opened her lips, and sprayed spittle at him. Drops of blood fell down on Hansen like rain. Hansen was surprised, and he wasn't quite sure what Isha was doing. Dong Ong. Within that sprinkling of blood, something landed on the bridge in front of Hans Sr. Hansen took a closer look. It was a red sewing needle. It was thinner than a hair, and it was around the length of a finger. What is this? Hansen picked it up. He thought that something about the sewing needle was very unusual. It felt like it was made of bone rather than metal. It was very small, but it was hollow inside. It was more like a needle for injection than a sewing needle. When Hansen lifted the bone needle, he felt it summon power inside his body. His energy started to circulate. Hansen stared with wide eyes. The power that was running was Blood Pulse Plunder, which he had learned not so long ago. Isha said quietly, most of the items I brought along with me were destroyed. This is a small item I managed to obtain from a broken statue. Take it as a souvenir and go. Upon hearing that, Hansen suddenly became very happy. The statue you mentioned, is that the one in the ruined palace? Stop wasting F asterisk king time. Get out now. Even if I die, you have to reclaim Planet Blade. Take care of my palace, because I don't want anyone to touch my stuff, Isha snarled. Chapter 2280, Are You Afraid of Needles? If you weren't there, what would be the point of me staying in that palace of yours? Hansen asked distractedly as he turned the needle over in his hands. That is my business. Just do as you're told, Isha said. Hansen smiled at Isha. I must apologize, my queen. I am a guy who would rather have his freedom and be able to relax as he chooses. I'm not a fan of staying put and looking after something. You should really go and take care of your own palace. Isha returned his smile with a wry one of her own. If I could return, I wouldn't be talking to you right now, would I? She started to say something more, but suddenly, Hansen froze. He was staring at the ghost statue, and with a flick of his wrist, he tossed the needle toward it. Isha sighed. She had spent some time researching that bone needle. It was almost completely indestructible, but it had no power. She had been unable to feel any power residing at its tip. If she had been able to use the bone needle and any power it possessed to break the ghost statue, she wouldn't have been bound there when Hansen found her. But Isha stared with a slack jaw as the bone needle sailed toward the statue, completely unimpeded. The ghost statue had knocked Hansen to the ground countless times but it didn't react to the bone needle at all. It merely watched the bone needle strike its forehead. This. How is this possible? Isha's eyes were wide. She gazed at the strange scene with disbelief. When the bone needle pierced the ghost statue's forehead, the needle lit up red. It shone brighter and brighter, and before long, the ghost statue started to shake. The noise of breaking rocks began to rumble around them. Ping. The next moment, the statue fell to pieces. The grip holding Isha and the blood Kirin was suddenly released. They fell to the bridge, the shattered remains of the statue's hands falling around them. The blood Kirin was injured, but it hadn't lost much strength. It gathered itself back up, and its signature red cloud swirled around it. Isha was close to death, and the blood in her body had almost run dry. She was very weak, and she didn't have the strength to react. She fell to the ground limply. Hansen caught her in his arms to prevent her from hitting the bridge. He smiled and said, My queen, it looks like you are going to have to tend to your palace after all. 
The purple air across the entire jade bridge began to spread and thin. Giant rocks began to fall. Isha was held in Hansen's arms. As she looked up at Hansen from below, her heart started to feel strange. She had never seen a man from a lower angle. She was always the one up high. She had never felt like this before, and suddenly, she started to feel even weaker. As the last pieces of the ghost statue fell, the purple air across the bridge began to evaporate. Hansen, the blood Kirin, and Isha started to return to normal. The jade bridge that had seemed endless now looked as it previously had. They could see the other twelve jade bridges around them and the thirteen teleporters in front of them. Fox Queen and the others, however, were gone. They must have traveled through the teleporter and left that palace. Because the blood Kirin was injured, Hansen opted not to ride it. He was still holding Isha as he strode across the jade bridge. You're not going to go through the teleporter? Isha asked weakly from where she was cradled against Hansen's chest. Of course I will, but before that, I want to walk across the rest of the jade bridges, Hansen said with a smile. Hansen wanted to walk the thirteen bridges for one simple reason. He wanted to get each statue's power. After Isha gave him the bone needle, he realized that the bone needle was a xenogenic treasure that combined with Blood Pulse Plunder. If he used Blood Pulse Plunder by itself, he would need to beat the enemy first. He couldn't use Blood Pulse Plunder to take away an opponent's Blood Pulse until the enemy didn't have enough power to fight back. If Hansen was squaring off against an extra strong enemy, though, there was always the chance that he might not be able to beat them. During times like that, Blood Pulse Plunder wouldn't be very useful. But with this Bone Needle, things were different. Hansen could imbue the Bone Needle with the powers of Blood Pulse Plunder. After that, he only had to put the Bone Needle into an enemy's body, and the Bone Needle would plunder the enemy's Blood Pulse. Hansen only needed to stick the Needle into a foe. That being said, the Bone Needle wasn't powerful on its own. Hansen would have to use his own strength. But piercing a Needle into an enemy was still far easier than trying to beat an opponent that had him bested. The statues on the 13 bridges were each prepared for the combination of Blood Pulse Plunder and the Bone Needle. The Bone Needle could easily pierce the statues and take the hidden Blood Pulse power that resided within them. Hansen would basically have to repeat what he did to the ghost statue. The Bone Needle had a concentration of power now, too. It was just a drop, but it was a Blood Pulse Hell power. It was a deified power. There had to be something similar on the other 12 bridges. That was something Hansen was most assuredly not going to miss out on. Hansen switched positions and carried Isha on his back. He walked to another jade bridge, and just as he had expected, the first half was safe. When he approached a statue in the middle of the bridge, he used the bone needle to absorb the blood pulse power inside the statue. The statue then fell, and the bridge lost its protection. It became an ordinary jade bridge again. Hansen walked through the rest of the bridges and took the blood pulse power from the statues. Isha's surprise was written plainly across her face, making it obvious that she had no clue why the bone needle was so powerful in Hansen's hands. Isha had picked up the bone needle, but she had no idea that the needle had to be used in conjunction with Blood Pulse Plunder. She didn't have Blood Pulse Plunder, so aside from its sturdiness, the needle had no utility in her hands. The second sacred leader statue had been destroyed for some reason so Hansen hadn't been able to retrieve the bone needle personally. Yet it landed in his hands anyway when Isha volunteered it. The sacred leader had blocked all the routes, but something had been left on each path for those that traversed it. The items were connected with each other in ways that Hansen hadn't yet figured out. The sacred leader's full plans were still a mystery. The silver Psyces, blood pulse plunder, the bone needle, 13 blood pulse powers, they were all very rare and valuable treasures. At this point, he could easily start a fight with a deified being. The treasures were meant to be obtained through tests given by the sacred leader. No one had realized how scary the sacred leader's treasures could be. My queen, are you afraid of needles? Hansen asked Isha. Isha was shocked, and she did not know what he meant. I mean, are you afraid of being pricked with a needle? Hansen blinked and asked. Are you going to give me a shot? Isha looked at Hans Sr. Hansen lifted his bone needle while he smiled at Isha. Close your eyes if you are afraid. The pain will be over in a second. After that, Hansen thrust his bone needle into Isha's chest. A drop of hell blood came out, and it blended into Isha's own blood. If he wanted to survive, he had to get rid of Fox Queen. 
and unless another deified elite challenged her, it was unlikely Fox Queen could be defeated. Even with Han Sen's deified blood pulse, his actual power wouldn't be deified. Isha, however, was different. She was half a step away from being deified herself. Getting the Hell Blood Pulse would give her a boost towards the lofty goal of becoming deified. This was their best chance of taking the Sacred Leader's treasure. Chapter 2281 Isha Levels Up The Hell Blood Pulse blended into Isha's body. Suddenly, a plume of purple air burst out of Isha. It solidified into a purple substance chain and wrapped around her, loop upon loop. Everything she had, her clothes, her accessories, her armor, and all sorts of other things, disintegrated into nothing but dust under the power of that substance chain. As the chain surrounded her, Isha curled her long body into a ball, like a fetus in the womb. Once Isha was safely encased within the purple cocoon, all became quiet. In a giant palace, Fox Queen, Mr. White, and Crime were traveling forward. Fox Queen suddenly stopped. She looked around her and said, Mr. White, is this the correct path? Why have we been walking for so long, and yet we are still in the same palace? Mr. White slowly said, This must be the fourth checkpoint for the treasure. We have to travel through here to get to where the treasure is. How do we get through here, then? Fox Queen asked Mr. White. This palace seems to have a space power restriction. My powers are weak here, and so I am afraid I might not be able to break the restriction. Perhaps this is something you will have to do, Mr. White said after a think. And how would I do something like that? Fox Queen asked with a frown. Judging from the calculations I have made, we can start right there. Mr. White pointed at a stone pillar as he spoke. Fox Queen looked at the stone pillar and groaned. She didn't move. Hansen stared at Isha with a look of surprise. The whole process had gone far better than he expected. The Hell Blood Pulse activated the Hell King blood she had inside her body. They fused with Isha's already considerable strength. She had broken through and become deified with no trouble at all. When she emerged from her cocoon and ascended, Isha was wearing a set of purple armor. Her regal presence blanketed everything around them as if she was the queen of the entire universe. If you dare to tell anyone about what just happened, I will kill you. Isha stared daggers at Hansen as she spoke. My queen, I didn't see anything. Hansen blinked innocently. But deep inside, he was thinking to himself, women are weird. Moments ago, she was begging to be deified. And now, after becoming deified, she still isn't happy. Does she really care about a small and inconsequential detail like being naked? Her naked body is quite nice. Why is she so upset? Isha only stared at Hansen in response. She turned silently and looked to the 13 teleporters. Then, she said, which teleporter do you think we should use? Clearly, Isha wasn't very good when it came to this sort of maze. It seemed as if she had forced her way through the palaces by trial and error. I'm not very good at figuring out the path, either. If I was to guess, though, I would assume they went through the teleporter at the end of the life and death cycle bridge. But even if we select the right one this time, we won't know where to go next. We'd have to try every single one we come to. Hansen stopped to think for a moment, and then resumed talking. My queen, how did you come this far in the first place? Isha thought and said, I was with the Ice Blue Knights. While I was exploring a planet with a group of knights, we accidentally woke up a deified xenogenia called Under Overbearing. I was swallowed by it. At first, I thought I was dead. I had been swallowed, and I knew that its stomach could digest anything. Even deified creatures would melt in there. Just when I lost all hope, I found a seam that allowed me to escape the stomach. I wiggled through the crack and got out. After traversing many caves and passing by a shattered statue, I ended up entering a palace. It must have been one of the palaces on under Overbearing's back. Wait a minute. Are you saying that you aren't the one who destroyed the floor in one of the palaces? And you didn't break the sacred leader statue? Hansen asked Isha with shock. Of course not. My power wasn't strong enough to destroy anything in the palace, Isha said. If you didn't break the palace, then that means someone else entered the palaces before you did. That crack in under Overbearing's stomach might have also been his work. Hansen mused quietly. Isha nodded. It is certainly possible, and he might indeed be around here someplace. What makes you think that? Hansen asked curiously. The crack in the under overbearing stomach couldn't have been there for very long. With how quickly the beast heals, the wound must have been made less than a week before. After a week, 
The damaged stomach would have healed completely, Isha said slowly. Hansen frowned. Then he might really still be in these palaces. But how could he leave no trace in the palace? If he was here, he would have left behind some indication of his presence. But aside from that one ruined palace, the rest of the trail was left by you. Yes? Isha nodded and said, Yes. And while I was exploring, I didn't see any sign of someone else having entered. Plus, he broke the statue, but he didn't take the bone needle inside. That's just weird. Was he too careless to find out what it harbored? But then again, how could such a powerful elite be that careless? It doesn't really make any sense, Hansen said. Isha sighed. Maybe he just doesn't care about the items in this place? Hansen was stunned by the suggestion, but as he considered the idea, it made sense. That might indeed be possible. He must be a very powerful person to create a whole and under overbearing stomach. Maybe his real target is the final treasure of the sacred leader. If that is the case, then that doesn't bode well for us. Hansen walked across the bridge of life and death. They arrived at the door of light and walked on through. The teleporter deposited them into a palace, the same as usual. There was a main hall, two side halls, and a hall in the back. All in all, there were four different teleporters. Hansen looked around and spoke to Isha. I think they left via the back hall. How do you know that? Isha asked in surprise. I can see the auras left behind by their bodies, Hansen explained simply. He was suspicious too though. The more powerful a person was, the less of a trail they would leave behind. And that trail didn't last forever. Mr. White and the others have been gone for a long time by this point. Under ordinary circumstances, it should have been hard for Hansen to detect the trace elements they had left behind. In fact, Hansen didn't see any traces of Fox Queen or crime. But he could see molecules that Mr. White had left lingering in the air. That didn't seem normal. Perhaps Mr. White made his trail visible on purpose? Hansen guessed to himself. But how could he know that Isha and I would survive? Why is he leaving me clues? Or is this all just a trap? Chapter 2282, The Place Where Treasure Lies Hansen and Isha were unable to make the calculations to determine the correct path. But instead of marching ahead recklessly, they could follow the traces left behind by Mr. White. In the end, that proved to be a very effective solution for navigating the palaces. Hansen, Isha, and the Blood Kirin followed Mr. White's tracks through each teleporter door. Hansen was the guide. Thankfully, they didn't encounter any dangers along the way. They went through a few palaces, and their journey remained uneventful. It was an entirely safe course to follow. What is Mr. White planning? Hansen wondered. He didn't know why Mr. White was taking this risk. It didn't make sense for Mr. White to believe that Hansen had the strength to stand up to Fox Queen. It also didn't seem likely that Mr. White would leave a trail behind just to cause Fox Queen trouble. Using the evidence of Mr. White's passage as a guide, Hansen and Isham made quick progress. It wasn't long before they arrived at the fourth checkpoint. What they saw there made Han Sin and Isha frown profusely. The hall was half collapsed. Broken pillars and remnants of a destroyed ceiling lay strewn across the entire place. Hansen looked across the hall, but he found no hide nor hair of a sacred leader statue there. In fact, there was nothing of any remarkability there. It looks like Fox Queen managed to make it through this checkpoint, Hansen said when he found nothing of interest in the palace. I wonder what the sacred leader left behind here. Whatever it was, Fox Queen must have made off with it. Hansen frowned. The sacred leader's items were all linked. If they were missing an item, they might run into a lot of trouble further down the line. Hansen and Isha had no choice but to keep going. When they went through the next teleporter, though, what they saw gave them a shock. They hadn't arrived at another palace. When they stepped out of the teleporter, they found themselves on the shore of an endless ocean. Under overbearing was as big as a planet. It wasn't really surprising to see an ocean on such an entity, but the sight still made Hansen feel depressed. Mr. White and the others must have begun crossing the oceans, but the ocean wind had destroyed all traces of Mr. White's trail. It's such a big ocean. I'm afraid it might be too difficult to locate Mr. White and the others, Hansen said sadly. Isha looked around. After a while of thought, she said, this could be where the sacred leader hid his treasure. Perhaps they haven't even gone very far, but they're exploring someplace below the waves. Hansen had thought of this possibility as well. If the treasure was in the water, finding Mr. White and the others might be even harder. I guess we have no choice but to take a look, 
Hansen said. Isha nodded and dipped into the sea. Her body unleashed a purple smoke, and when the smoke came into contact with the water, the water parted. Hansen and the blood Kirin moved next to Isha. They headed deep into the sea, surrounded by the sphere of dryness provided by Isha. Isha's purple smoke kept the water about 10 meters at bay. After they started their dive, they descended deep into the ocean. They walked a hundred miles beneath the sea, and in all that time, they didn't catch sight nor sound of any other creature. The ocean looked dead. It was like a long dead sea that was no longer fit for any living thing. Suddenly, a giant shadow moved in the water. Isha stopped and stared at the giant shadow in the sea. The shadow was approaching them quickly. Hansen was given a proper fright when he saw what the thing was. It was a giant xenogeneic that looked like a whale. Its body was pure white. The white whale was more than a thousand meters long, and every move sent devastating shockwaves rolling through the sea. Many small vortexes popped up around it. Deified creature, Isha said quietly. I didn't expect under overbearing's body to be the home of other deified creatures. I'm afraid that, aside from the sacred leader, no other being could do something like that. Hansen had a wry smile. The big white whale noticed the three of them. After all, there were no other creatures in that ocean, so their presence was rather noticeable. That was especially true of Isha and the blood Kirin. One of them was a deified elite, and the other was full of blood air. It was difficult not to notice their presence. When the big white whale was a thousand meters away from them, it suddenly opened its mouth and released a high-pitched sonic wave. At the same time, its mouth produced a strong force of suction. Many giant vortexes swirled to life within the water. They snared everything within range and pulled it all into the whale's belly. Wisps of Isha's purple air began to flow into that vortex, and their sphere of air suddenly started to feel the force of that suction. More and more of the purple air was pulled away through the water, taken in the direction of the creature's mouth. Isha frowned. She used her hand as a knife, and the purple air suddenly gathered up into a large swathe of knife air. She lifted her arms above her head and slashed towards the vortex. The knife air became a roaring purple air demon. It was headed right for the giant white whale. It broke through the vortex that the big white whale had generated, but the demon-looking knife air didn't stop there. It continued on, going right for the white whale's head. The big white whale showed no indication that it was going to dodge the incoming blow. In fact, its mouth widened even further. It looked like a gaping black hole. Its powers of suction increased, and it swallowed Isha's demon knife air effortlessly. Gudong. The giant white whale swallowed the demonic knife air hole, then let out a satisfied burp. It then spat out some air and created loads of bubbles in the sea. Hansen was dumbfounded. Isha had just become deified, and she was filled with hell power. She also had the teeth knife skills. Her talents were famous among many races, and her wrecking abilities were widely renowned. The big white whale, however, had swallowed her attack easily. The power that the giant white whale possessed was truly scary. Isha frowned. Purple substance chains rose from her body and began to align in mysterious patterns. They created a purple knife air around Isha's body. Isha's entire body was now full of a knife mind. It felt to haunt Sin as if she was a cruel knife herself, that she could wreck anything at any time. Isha raised the full extent of her power and prowess, but the giant white whale still didn't seem to be afraid. It opened its mouth, and the black hole power returned. It sucked everything nearby into its mouth. Sand and water came rolling and like they were being pulled into a bottomless pit. Seeing the giant white whale open its mouth again, Isha coldly shouted. Her arms swung at the big white whale. The roaring demon headed for the big white whale once more, dispersing the sand and shattering the rocks as it went. It left a trail of devastation behind it. The purple knife air and the big white whale's black hole collided with each other. The black hole was destroyed, and the purple knife air was shattered. The shockwave of the collision exploded the entire sea. Huge waves surged across its surface, and it was like the entire ocean had been turned upside down. The two strikes were balanced, though. Neither had the upper hand. The next second, Isha and Hans Sin's eyes widened. The big white whale's mouth was still hanging open, and suddenly, something flew out of it. It wrapped around Isha, Hansen, and the blood Kirin, then pulled them into the big white whale's belly. Chapter 2283, Bronze Bell It was a big bronze bell that had covered Hansen, Isha, and the blood Kirin. Isha's purple substance chain became a knife air. 
She waved her hand to strike the surface of the bell, but it only made a loud, tolling noise. The bell showed no sign of damage. What is this bell? Why was it in the white whale's belly? Can Xenogeneics make use of Xenogeneic treasures? Hansen was shocked. Dong. The bronze bell landed on something, and then it stopped moving. Isha continued to strike the bell with her knife air, but the bronze bell suddenly lifted away from them. It flew to the side, freeing them. Isha immediately surrounded Han Sen and the Blood Kirin with her power to protect them. Based on the direction that the bell had moved after it covered them, they should have been standing inside the white whale, probably in its stomach. A deified Xenogeneic's digestion system wasn't something an ordinary creature could hope to withstand. Even king-class elites would dissolve quickly inside such a stomach. But when Han Sen and Isha looked around, they froze. This was not a stomach. It was a control room of high-end technology. The tech around them equaled any that might be found in a classy battleship's control room. The most unbelievable thing was that everything in the control room was transparent. They could see outside of the room, and the feelings that the side elicited were difficult to explain. Although it looked like a whale from the exterior, it was actually governed by machinery. Every piece of the whale's interior was made of crystal of various colors. Humming generators, pounding pistons, and spinning every movement could be seen from where they were. What is this thing? This time, Hansen was really shocked. The white whale had looked like a deified creature from the outside, but it was actually a technological marvel. It was hard to believe that such an amazing machine actually existed. Isha looked around in shock. Their eyes soon turned to a platform of that primary control room. A man had been sitting in a chair behind the control platform. It was little more than a skeleton at this point, with a few white bones still wrapped in the clothes he had been wearing. The man's clothes looked like a high-tech product, not some treasure armor. Judging from the style of the silver and black clothing, it was possible to determine that the skeleton had been a man. After bringing Hansen and the others into the room, the bronze bell had drastically reduced its size. It was now about the size of a man's fist, and it rested there in the main control room. Does this sort of technology exist anywhere else in the Geno universe? Hansen looked at Isha. He had no idea what race might have constructed this marvel of technology. Isha shook her head. There are many technological wonders that have the destructive powers of a deified being, but not many can actually be used in combat. They take far too long to aim and fire, so they can't be used in actual deified fights. They are mostly useful for attacking planets, since planets cannot be moved. The Mechus bio-armor is also technological in nature. They have very powerful weapons, but again, they are different from what we're seeing here. Clearly, Isha was just as clueless as Han Sr. This has to be another one of the Sacred Leader's creations. Sacred achieved a lot when it came to technology, Hansen pondered aloud as he looked around. Since the White Whale's master appeared to be quite dead, how could the White Whale continue to move without someone at the controls? And what had prompted the behemoth to swallow them? Isha walked toward the skeleton. She waved her hand, and one of her purple substance chains dissolved into a purple mist. The mist flowed over the skeleton and began to poke around it. She was looking for some lead or clue they could follow. But before Isha's purple air touched the skeleton, the bronze bell rose from its resting platform and covered up Isha's purple air at once. Huh. This old bronze bell defends its master automatically. Is it a piece of technology, as well? Hansen looked at the old bronze bell in shock. Suddenly, Hansen and Isha heard a boy's voice. You are a technological product. Your entire family is a technological product. Who is that? Hansen and Isha were shocked. They looked around them, but neither of them could sense any presences. There was just that soul skeleton sitting on the primary control deck. It made Hansen and Isha feel very uncomfortable. No way. Have we encountered a ghost? Hansen muttered as he stared at the skeleton. He used his dog shin aura to scan the skeleton multiple times, but there was no life force. It couldn't have been any more dead, so there was no way that the voice was coming from it. Hansen could only think that they must be talking to a ghost. You are a ghost. Your entire family is a ghost. The little boy's voice was heard again, and it sounded pretty mad. This time, Hansen and Isha located the source of the voice. It came from the little bronze bell. The bronze bell shook. Strange symbols glowed across it, and it opened shiny green eyes. Below its eyes was a gap. It looked like a mouth that kept opening and closing. Hansen stared at the bronze bell that was shouting at him. 
The body of the bell seemed to be vibrating with rage. What is this thing? Hansen didn't know how to react. He hadn't displayed any signs of a life force, so he thought it must be a xenogenic treasure. But now that it was talking, it certainly seemed to possess all the traits and characteristics of a living creature. You are a thing. Your entire family is a thing. The bronze bell was becoming even angrier. It was jumping up and down as it shouted, Are you an AI? If you are, it seems like you are a very cheap one. You can only say the same thing over and over, Hansen said, looking at the bronze bell with curiosity. The bronze bell started to yell, You are a th It trailed off halfway through its shout. If it continued, people really would believe it was an AI. So, after its half shout, the bronze bell stopped and settled down a little. With a very cocky look, it said, You stupid low life creature. Listen up. Your master's name is Big King Bell, but you guys can call me either Master or Big King. After that, Big King Bell thought of something. It looked at Hansen and said, Your master is not some sort of AI. Chapter 2284 King Hansen looked at Isha. They were confused. What was this thing? It was sort of like a treasure, but it wasn't a treasure. It was sort of like a creature, but it wasn't a creature. The J drum was a creature but the jade drum was created naturally. It wasn't something that was man-made. Words were scrawled across the little bell's body, though, and that suggested it wasn't a natural being. Okay, Big King, why did you snatch us and bring us here? Hansen asked the bell. Big King Bell rolled its eyes and jumped. He said, what do you mean by snatch? I was saving you guys. Couldn't you tell? Don't talk big if you don't know SH asterisk T, kid. You were saving us? How? Hansen looked at Big King Bell with confusion. Ugh, you guys don't understand anything. And yet here you come, waltzing into the Holy Spirit Sea. You must have a death wish. If it wasn't for me saving you guys, you two would have ended up like him. You know, with only bones left. The bell jumped up to land atop the skeleton's skull as it spoke. Who is he? Hansen asked with curiosity. He had originally thought that the skeleton was Big King Bell's master. But now, that didn't seem to be the case. Ah, huh. this piece of garbage? How do you expect me to remember who he was? He was just another pawn, like a background extra in this tale. Big King Bell proclaimed, lifting his lips in disdain. Hansen didn't believe the bell. There was no way that an unimportant person would have been in charge of controlling a technological marvel like the White Whale. Even if the man hadn't been very powerful personally, he could have used the whale to hold his own against a deified being. How did he die? Isha asked Big King Bell. Big King Bell rolled its eyes. He thought that since he had this strange machine, he could cross the Holy Spirit Sea and take the sacred leader's treasure. He had no idea of the power of the Holy Spirit Sea. This thing didn't stand a chance of repelling the sea's power. Not in the least. He died before he even made it to Holy Spirit Town. Only his bones remained. After that, Big King Bell jumped onto the control platform and cockily said, but this thing was quite interesting and so I decided to hold on to it as a keepsake. Hansen knew Big King Bell was talking about the white whale. He looked at the skeleton and told Isha, this guy must have dived a long time ago. He didn't get here recently. What? Another creature was here? Big King Bell asked before Isha could respond. He seemed startled as he stared at Hans Sr. Yeah, there's a few of them. Hansen looked at Big King Bell and asked, you came here, too. What is so strange about that? Huh? I was here, Big King Bell trailed off as a thought crossed his mind. He stopped talking. Hear what? Hansen asked. Huh. Big King Bell grunted and said, That is none of your business. Don't you have the relic with you? How are so many other creatures able to reach this place? Or is under overbearing now so old that people are reaching the palace through his mouth? Hansen was shocked that Big King Bell knew he possessed the relic. This bell seemed to know things that it shouldn't so perhaps it was connected to the sacred leader's treasure somehow. Let's not waste our breath. Give me the relic, and when I open the holy town's treasury, you will receive what you are owed. Big King Bell hovered in the air before Hansen as it spoke. You can have the relic, but I will have to see if you have what it takes. Hansen smiled. Chapter 2285 Deified Fight That guy seemed very spirited. What would make him run away in such a hurry? Hansen looked at Isha with confusion. Isha sighed and said, maybe its power takes a long time to regenerate. That strike he unleashed might have cost him most of the power he had gathered. Now Hansen was able to understand. 
It was like the red mist king that depended on the seven red mist minks for energy. It took a very long time for such power to be gathered. If Big King Bell had failed to bluff Hansen and Isha, it knew it had to run once Fox Queen showed up. What do we do now then? Hansen asked, looking at Isha. Isha didn't answer. She teleported to the back door. Hansen knew what she meant by that. He mounted the blood Kirin and followed after Isha. Big King Bell was a big phony, but he was familiar with the surrounding area. Getting information from him could be quite useful. After they rushed out of the white whale, Isha's body flashed away. The blood Kirin was unable to catch up with her. It was like a human having a foot race against a sports car. Half deified had the word deified in it, but they were still king class beings at their core. Real deified beings were in another league entirely. Hansen. Isha had chased after Big King Bell, quickly disappearing. Upon seeing Hansen emerge from the white whale's belly, Fox Queen called out in surprise. Before Hansen could think of escaping, Fox Queen flashed before him and the Blood Kirin to block their path. Good timing. Give me the relic, and I will spare your lives. Fox Queen narrowed her eyes at Hansen, but it looked as if she was smiling. Pretty sister. You are giving me more trouble. I don't have the relic on me. Hansen looked troubled, and he said, Did you see that person that just ran off? That was my master, Knife Queen. I gave her the relic. In that case, let us see if your master or the relic is the most important thing in your heart, Fox Queen said coolly. Many cords of power slid out of her, and they came slithering over to wrap around Hansen and the Blood Kirin. But Hansen patted his bird's nest, which grew bigger to shield him and the Blood Kirin. It blocked out Fox Queen's cords of power. Even so, the cords of power locked tightly around the bird's best. And that meant Hansen was now unable to escape. My good little brother, you think having this bird's nest will keep me from doing anything to you? Fox Queen smiled, and then she pulled something out from her waist. Hansen saw the item, and when he did, his heart fell. Fox Queen had brought out a small jade flute. It was less than one foot long, and it was a translucent, creamy color. It looked very small and fragile. Fox Queen, are you proficient in sonic powers? The bird's nest might not be able to filter out noise, so I don't know if it can withstand sonic powers, Hansen thought to himself. The bird's nest was not a bisema, and Hansen couldn't trigger its full power. He used the bird's nest power as a protective force, but it was difficult to tell if he could block a sonic attack. Fox Queen brought the small jade flute to her lips. She smiled at Hansen, and then, she opened those red lips. The jade flute began to produce sweet music. The flute wasn't particularly loud, but a very vague chord of power came out of the flute. The chord was coming for the bird's nest. Hansen was shocked. He realized that the music of the flute could seep through the dry grass of the bird's nest, and that realization made him depressed. He had received the approval of the undying bird's nest, and so he was able to make use of the bird's nest. But that usage was limited. Since he couldn't activate the bird's nest power, he couldn't utilize its defensive properties. Fox Queen's flute sounds were able to sink into Han Sen's bird's nest, and there was nothing he could do to prevent it. That music of the flute sank into the bird's nest like silk strands coming to tangle up Han Sen and the Blood Kirin. Han Sen and the Blood Kirin did their best to free themselves, but they were ultimately unable to get rid of the flute's music. Under the influence of the flute, Han Sen couldn't control himself. He lifted the bird's nest and began crawling out like a puppet on strings. Oh no. Oh no. Hansen felt terrible. Seeing Hansen slowly moving out of the bird's nest, Fox Queen's expression was beatific. But when Hansen saw the smile, he did not feel good. Just as Hansen was pulled fully from the bird's nest, Fox Queen's expression became surprised. She waved her jade flute. Dong. A purple knife air roared through the air. It was like a demon coming forward to strike Fox Queen's jade flute. That endless purple knife air slashed the jade flute repeatedly, then struck Fox Queen's body and sent her flying ten kilometers away. Fox Queen broke the knife air and stood still. Isha's body flashed next to Hansen, and her phoenix eyes moved to meet Fox Queen's beautiful eyes. Fox Queen felt as if she could feel the spark between them. You were Hansen's teacher? Fox Queen smiled like a flower, but her eyes looked cold. Not bad, Isha answered coldly. Perfect. Hansen said you possess the relic. Give it to me now, and I will let you both walk free, Fox Queen said coldly. Isha responded seriously, I do not recall having a queen like you to obey. Upon hearing those words, 
Fox Queen looked furious. She swung her jade flute, and some sad sounds came at Isha. As this occurred, she hissed, How dare you? Hansen knew something very bad was about to happen. He didn't say anything and just maintained his hold on the bird's nest, moving toward the fallen white whale. Two deified beings were now having a fight. Ordinary creatures would not be able to endure the shockwaves. Hansen didn't want to stay there and be reduced to dust. Fortunately, the white whale was ownerless now that Big King Bell had departed. Hansen planned to hide inside and see if he could operate the thing. The white whale could block the attacks of a deified elite. Isha and Fox Queen had been unable to destroy its body. That thing must have been very tough, so if Hansen was able to drive it, the whale would be far greater than a top-class battleship. When Fox Queen came for Hansen, she had given up trying to bind the white whale. The white whale had fallen into the sea, and half of it was just floating atop the surface of the sea. The blood Kirin dove and took them into the water. Hansen planned on going to the back door and making his way to the white whale's control room. As soon as he entered, he noticed that Crime and Mr. White had followed him. I was born deified. I have beaten billions of people in this universe. I am the strongest in the sky or on the land. Even the sacred leader, when he met with me, would refer to me as Big King Brother. Are you honestly trying to compete with me? Big King Bell looked at Hansen with actual surprise. He hadn't expected Hansen to be so ignorant. Big King Brother, even if you are so strong, you should demonstrate that strength. Otherwise, how am I honestly supposed to believe that you are as strong as you claim? Hansen put out his hands as he spoke. I pulled you guys in here on a whim. Wasn't that enough? Do I have to kill you idiots to show you how strong I am? Big King Bell looked at Hansen coldly as he slowly rose higher into the air. He looked as if he was going to kill Hans Sr. Big King Brother, it was a powerful demonstration when you grabbed us. But that isn't enough to make us want to hand over the relic. Will you show me again? If you can convince us, I will give you the relic without argument. Hansen smiled at Big King Bell. He thought that the Big King Bell was quite interesting, and that was an impetus for Hansen to trash talk it. The bronze bell had shielded them as it pulled them inside, but that was because they hadn't been prepared for its sudden arrival. Isha still hadn't shown off her true strength, so Hansen wasn't worried about annoying the bell. Big King Brother looked down on Hansen with utter disdain. Even a small fraction of my power would convince you to obey me, but I have way too many powerful Geno arts. Let me think of a weaker one I can show you. Just in case my Geno art is too strong, and I accidentally end up killing you all. Big King Bell spun in the air twice, looking as if he had made a decision. He jumped onto the control platform and punched a few buttons. The white whale then rose to the surface and opened its mouth. The front of the control room looked out through the white whale's eyes letting the operator see what was going on outside. Idiots! I'm going to open your eyes to my power. I'm going to show you the techniques of a real and invincible elite, Big King Bell said. His body began to glow green and spin as it grew bigger and bigger. The bell turned onto its side, aiming its opening out the white whale's mouth. Then, they heard a loud chiming noise from the bell. A scary shockwave blasted out of the bell. Boom! The whole sea was cut in half by the bell's sonic blast. The waters were parted down to the seafloor and all the way to the opposite shore of the ocean. Oh, D asterisk am in. This guy really does have a lot of power. Hansen was frozen. Big King Bell's power really did seem to exceed that of Isha and Fox Queen. Isha looked shaken, too. The power that Big King Bell released was truly magnificent. Holy Spirit Sea wasn't just a vat of ordinary seawater, either. Isha didn't think she could split that much of it. So, how about that? Do you guys believe me now? Give me the relic at once. Follow me, before I decide that I don't like you. If you do come, you guys will benefit greatly, Big King Bell said to Hansen with a lot of pride. While they were talking, three shadows appeared above the sea. It was Fox Queen, Mr. White, and Crime. When Fox Queen saw the big white whale, she shook her fox tail. An invisible cord of power lashed around the white whale and she lifted it out of the sea. Big King Bell quickly leaped atop the platform and hit the buttons on the panels. The white whale opened its mouth and created a black hole, then sent a force of suction towards Fox Queen. But Fox Queen's hand tugged on the cord of power, binding the white whale's mouth. The white whale was unable to open its maw, and so the black hole died inside it. Hanston was waiting to see how Big King Bell disposed of Fox Queen. If she was killed, they'd lose a dangerous enemy. 
But when Hansen turned around, he saw Big King Bell pulling out a big bag seemingly out of nowhere. The bell was going to flee out of the whale via the back door. Big King brother, aren't you going to kill her? Hansen asked with confusion. I am busy. I will let her live for now, but I will surely remember her. The next time I see her, I will blow some air at her to kill her, Big King Bell said firmly. Then he left through the back door with his big bag in tow. Hansen and Isha were frozen. They weren't sure about how to react. Chapter 2286, Crystallizer Technology Boom. Hansen was about to say something, but a scary sound cut him off. And then, the white whale suddenly flipped and started to sink. Many forces of horrible powers lashed the white whale, and each strike was like the crack of thunder. Fortunately, the big white whale was pretty solid. The shockwaves of combat coming from Isha and Fox Queen were not enough to break the hull. But even so, the impacts were driving it deeper into the sea. Boom. The whale shook under their feet as if it had just hit something, and after that, they heard the sound of something large being destroyed. Then, there was only silence. The white whale was no longer being tossed about. Looking out the white whale's eyes, they couldn't see anything except seawater and piles of rock. It looked as if the big white whale had been crushed under an enormous pile of rubble far below the surface. The sea around them was swirling like mad. Even though they were far enough underwater that they could hear the fight overhead, they still saw occasional shockwaves rolling through the water. The turbulence had, however, slowed down a lot. The white whale was now buried by the stone, and it could no longer move. That made Hansen feel better, at least. This white whale is a machine. Crime looked around the control room in shock. The revelation had obviously caught him off guard. Mr. White was also looking about the big white whale with interest. Big King Bell, who wasn't the original owner, had been able to control the big white whale. Hansen figured that Mr. White probably could as well. Anyone could control a machine like that, as long as it wasn't locked down. It should work on essentially the same principles as any other machine. Don't move it. Mr. White shouted, just as Hansen was about to move the skeleton on the command chair. Hansen stopped and waited as Mr. White and Crime came to the control deck. What have you learned, Mr. White? Hansen asked politely. Mr. White looked at the skeleton and said, If I understand the situation correctly, this skeleton is the key that makes it possible to control the white whale. Hansen was shocked. He had previously watched Big King Bell jump around on the platform, but he didn't think much of it since the bell was able to control the white whale. But Hansen now saw the thing he had missed earlier. Big King Bell must have used the white whale for a long time, but the bell had never moved the skeleton. There must have been a reason for that. Mr. White, where do you think this technology came from? Hansen asked Mr. White. Mr. White shook his head. This is the first time I have ever come across something like this. I don't know how to control it, either. After pausing, Mr. White looked at the skeleton and said, But judging from its clothing, this person must have been connected to the control systems. His remains must be the key to controlling this entire machine. I cannot tell what might happen if we were to remove them. Hansen examined the skeleton's clothes and started thinking. The skeleton's uniform was silver and black, and aside from the head, the entire body was wrapped up tight. It wore a transparent mask that was connected to the uniform. There was no visible seam. Hansen spent some time observing it, and although he couldn't find a connection between the chair and the uniform, he thought the uniform and the white whale must have been linked somehow. Hansen activated the purple eye butterfly to examine the uniform the platform, and the chair. There were many powerful relics that the purple eye butterfly could tell Hansen very little about. But if the item in question was some sort of technology, the purple eye butterfly was incredibly useful in revealing how it had been made and what its purpose was. When the purple eye butterfly rewound, Hansen could see the entire process of the white whale's creation. What he witnessed gave Hansen quite the surprise. Without a doubt, the white whale was one of the most powerful technologies to ever exist in the entire universe. The process of creating it had been very complicated. It was even harder to build than a deified weapon. It was doubtlessly so complicated because there was a lot of science involved. Every problem that arose with each individual part of the machine had to be solved through science. If Hansen could analyze every facet of the white whale's technology, leveling up the Alliance's technological advancement would be easy. That wasn't the most shocking thing, either. As Hansen watched the construction of the White Whale, he saw the shadow of the beetle. 
Although the white whale was more advanced than the beetle, the concept of their creation was similar. The white whale was just on a whole new level. The technology of the white whale, in every possible way, far exceeded that of the beetle. Every detail was better than the beetle's, too. Is this crystallizer technology? Hansen wondered in shock. The more he saw of the big white whale, the more accurate his guess seemed to be. Was the technology of the crystallizers ever this good? Could they make machines of a deified level? That's a very frightening idea, Hansen mused. That would explain why the crystallizers challenged a higher race despite lacking deified elites of their own. Having such technology probably gave them the confidence to start a fight for a lantern. In the end, however, their arrogance and hubris had led to their failure and downfall. As a result, the race was almost entirely destroyed. What a shame. If the crystallizers had challenged a less powerful higher race, they could have definitely claimed a lantern. And then, they would have developed even further. They would probably have become one of the top races in the universe. Hansen sighed. But Hansen then realized that if the crystallizers had become a higher race, they would have continued to develop their technology. They wouldn't have wanted to change their genes and blood pulse. They might never have experimented with their genes, and if that was so, humans would never have come into existence. Hansen, you still have the relic, right? Mr. White asked Hans Sr. Why are you asking me this? Hansen looked at Mr. White. Mr. White smiled and said, I left a trace so that you could follow us, and that means I wish to continue our venture of cooperation. Before one of those two wins the fight above us, we should explore the holy town. What made you think I catch up with you? Hansen asked Mr. White with a raised eyebrow. Because I believe in you, Mr. White said gently. Hansen stared back at Mr. White. Hansen hadn't believed that the two of them were very close, but Mr. White had just claimed to have an unbelievable amount of faith in him. He gazed into Mr. White's eyes and acknowledged the sincerity within them. This wasn't just another bargain for Mr. White. But for some reason, when Hansen looked deep into Mr. White's eyes, he had a familiar feeling. It was as if they had already met a long time ago. Chapter 2287, Holy Town That familiar feeling was only present for a single second. When he looked closely at Mr. White again, the man was like a stranger once more. He knew whatever Hansen might have momentarily felt. Mr. White was of the Extreme King. Hansen didn't know much about the Extreme King, all in all, and there was no one amongst them that he was actually close with. No one would ever claim that Mr. White was a close friend of his, either. Thinking of this, Hansen considered Mr. White's suggestion. To be honest, Mr. White's suggestion greatly tempted Hans Senator after all. Hansen wasn't entirely sure Isha could defeat Fox Queen in combat. And even if Isha won and continued traveling with him, he would have to share whatever treasure he found with her. They had a good relationship, and they were close enough to practically be considered family. But at the end of the day, their relationship was still built on the foundation that Isha had no clue Hansen was the almighty dollar. If Isha found out that Hansen was dollar, there was no telling what she might do. After all, dollar had not been kind to Isha. Hansen decided to go ahead and explore the sacred leader's treasury with Mr. White. He didn't have to plan out everything in advance. He could betray whoever he needed to whenever he wanted to. He could take any item he required when the time to do so arose. If Hansen needed to leave these two behind, he would do it without a second thought. It was a very businesslike mindset. They were all striving for personal benefit, and they would only cooperate when they needed to use one another. Hansen needed Mr. White to guide him safely to where the treasure lay. Mr. White needed the relic Hansen carried. They were both using each other for their own purposes. And when Hansen found the treasure, even if Hansen didn't betray them, it was likely that Crime and Mr. White would be the ones betraying him. Of course, the most important thing was that Hansen would be capable of betraying Mr. White. He just couldn't do that in front of Fox Queen and Isha. We don't have time to wait around. If there is a winner of that battle, neither of us will have the chance to explore that city, Mr. White said to Hans Sr. Hansen went silent. He looked at Mr. White and asked, You guys destroyed the fourth checkpoint. Did you find anything there? Hansen cared about the item in the fourth checkpoint a great deal. There was a high chance that whatever item was retrieved there would prove useful when they reached the treasure. Mr. White went silent, then said, When Fox Queen destroyed the 36 stone pillars there, she found the jade flute inside the last pillar. That jade flute didn't belong to Fox Queen originally? 
Hansen remembered that Fox Queen had been locked inside Ghost Bone's palace for the longest time. Hansen had seen no evidence of the flute there, so why would she suddenly possess it now? It made sense that she had gotten it from the fourth checkpoint, but Hansen was unable to see how the jade flute connected to the other checkpoints and the items they had yielded. Mr. White didn't say anything. He just waited for Hansen to make a decision. Hansen was thinking. He used a finger to point at the skeleton in the chair. This sea seems special. He dived into this deep sea with the intent of reaching its holy town. That is how he became like this in the first place. I know, Mr. White said simply. That is why we need the relic you have. It will allow us to reach the holy town safely. Okay. In that case, we will go and explore the holy town. Hansen made his mind up. Hansen didn't know where the holy town was, but Mr. White obviously did. Hansen followed him in crime. They left the white whale and dove deeper, going so far under the sea that they reached the deep sea. The sea waves down there were incredibly strong. Clearly, Fox Queen and Isha were still engaged in combat. It would take a long time for one of them to emerge victorious. Hansen wasn't worried about Isha's well-being. With her abilities, even if she was unable to triumph over Fox Queen, he didn't think Fox Queen had what it took to kill Isha. And if Fox Queen couldn't defeat Isha, then he might as well head for the holy town. Hansen had already learned of a way in which he could commandeer and pilot the white whale, but he saw no reason to use it just yet. Perhaps it would prove useful in the future. With Mr. White's guidance, Hansen went deeper and deeper. The further they went, the quieter the sea became. The shockwaves Isha and Fox Queen were creating didn't reach those levels. If my calculations are correct, then the sacred leader's treasure should be someplace inside this trench. Mr. White pointed to a large underwater trench in front of him. Hansen looked down into the trench and saw nothing but darkness. It was like a bottomless abyss. Even using the power of the purple eye butterfly, he still couldn't see what lurked within. Without too much hesitation, though, Mr. White and Crime continued to swim down. Hansen rode the blood Kieran after them. They all headed into the darkness of the deep trench. A little ways down, Hansen felt as if something was amiss. The stone plate in his pocket started to burn. Hansen pulled out the stone plate, and when he did, the plate glowed with a holy light. It lit up a small pocket of brightness amidst the suffocating dark of that place. Just as I thought. Only people who have the relic can enter the place that holds the true treasures of the sacred leader. Mr. White seemed to have expected this, and he had the stone plate as he spoke. The three of them and the beast continued to venture down. The water around them was very dark and creepy. No matter how strong their vision was, they could only see within the small pouch of light that the stone plate provided them. Everything else was pitch black. Nothing else could be seen, as if the entire world had gone black. They didn't know if this was the work of an illusion or not, but Hansen could feel countless eyes peering at them from beyond the black. Time passed. Hansen had no clue how deep they had dived by this point, but the trench was like a bottomless abyss. No matter how deep they went, there appeared to be no end. When he looked up, he found that it was pitch black above him, too. The light couldn't penetrate the sea to such depths. They created small waves in the water as they swam, but there was no other movement. Isha and Fox Queen's fight didn't reach them at all anymore. Because it was too dark there, even the blood Kieran started to feel nervous. It kept releasing quiet moans and groans as it swam. Hansen used his hands to stroke the blood Kieran's neck and bring it a bit of comfort. The blood Kieran had always been so moody and angry, and telling him to be quiet would be harder than making him bleed. Mr. White, however, looked calm. Crime was a little nervous, though. It looked like he was feeling the same fear as the blood Kieran. They felt as if they were being watched by phantom eyes in the dark. Hansen knew for sure that something bad lurked out of sight. If it wasn't for his hands holding that relic, their small group would have already ended up like the master of the white whale. Suddenly, it looked like a blurry halo appeared around Hans Sin's feet in the dark. He focused on that little halo. But the halo was too blurry, and he couldn't see it clearly. Mr. White and Crime also saw the halo. They looked down and checked it out. As their bodies descended, that blurry light became clearer and larger. When Hansen finally got a good look at what was in that halo, he opened his mouth. Chapter 2288 Holy Town Xenogeneics In that strange deep sea, Everything around them was pitch black. But at the bottom of the ocean, there was a quiet city lying in the dark. The city was nestled in the darkness like a jewel. 
It glowed like a beacon of holy light. This underwater town was far different from the one Hansen had seen before. This holy town actually looked like a statue. All the buildings were pieces of a single structure. There were statues that were a few dozen stories high, and every brick was made of jade. The town looked like a jade statue that came from another world. What shocked Hansen the most was the shape of the giant underwater town. The statue was shaped like a sleeping beast with the end of its tail tucked under its head. And the face of the beast startled Hansen badly. The Nine Life Cat. Hansen almost screamed aloud. The town was shaped just like the Nine Life Cat pendant Hansen used to own. Aside from the white color of the town, it was just an incredibly large version of the Nine Life Cat pendant. When Hansen and the others approached the Jade Town, the town started to look bigger in their eyes. And when they touched the holy light coming from it, the stone plate's light suddenly exploded. Tiny cracks spread across the stone plate. Not long after, the stone plate crumbled away in Hansen's hands, leaving behind a crystal that had rested in the center of the tablet. The crystal was shaped like a water drop, and it rose into the water. It shone with a holy light. It left Hansen's fingers and drifted towards the jade town. Hansen reached his hand out to grab it, but the water drop crystal was too fast for him. Hansen snatched at empty water behind it. The crystal flew towards the cat statue's head. In the nine life cat's forehead, there was a jade statue. The jade statue looked like a sleeping nine life cat as well, although a smaller one. That nine life cat statue's forehead had a water drop slot in it. It looked like the socket of a third eye. The crystal fitted itself perfectly into that water drop shaped slot. The fit was so tight that it was practically seamless, and the nine life cat statue suddenly looked complete. It then underwent some weird changes. The sleeping nine life cat statue suddenly opened its eyes. It laid there lazily for a minute, and its paws moved to run its sleepy looking cat eyes. It raised its head to look at Hansen and the others floating over the jade town. The three of them wondered if they should enter, but the nine life cat suddenly raised its paw and waved at them like a lucky cat charm. They felt some irresistible power come upon them. All of them, including the blood Kirin, were then sucked into the jade town as if by magnetic attraction. They used all their powers to resist the pull, but their efforts were in vain, and they were still pulled down anyway. Ping, 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 for loud booms rang out as they dropped into the town. They landed in front of a palace that stood before the jade cat statue. Welcome to Holy Town, you poor guys. The nine live cat statue was now looking at them from above. Its teeth were bared in something like a smile, but the face didn't seem to possess much mirth. The three of them looked at each other. They didn't know what this was all about, but they made sure to remain alert. They stared at the nine live cat statue. Don't be afraid. I am just a guardian spirit that protects the town. I will not hurt any of you. The jade cat still possessed that smile that wasn't actually a smile. Then, the tone of its voice changed. But since you guys are in the holy town, if you cannot pass the test of the sacred leader, they will probably kill you. Why do we even have to accept your tests? Crime asked coldly. Despite being a statue, the nine life cat seemed to have no trouble thinking for itself. It smiled at crime and said, It is okay if you don't want to take the test. That means you give up, and you can die right now. Crime frowned. He started to say something more, but Mr. White stopped him. Mr. White looked at the jade cat statue and quietly asked, What kind of tests are we expected to perform? And if we succeed, what will our rewards be? The jade cat looked at Mr. White, smiled, and said, It is simple. Live. Live in the holy town. If you can survive for ten days, you can win something from the sacred leader's surprise goodie bag. Good luck. Try not to die too soon. After the jade cat statue finished speaking, every palace and room across the town opened its doors. Many scary xenogeneics began to slowly crawl out of their dens. The blood Kirin scale straightened up like a dog raising its hackles. Its blood air rose. It growled in warning at the approaching creatures, but the growl warbled slightly as if the blood Kirin was scared. The xenogeneic beasts acted as if they hadn't heard the blood Kirin at all. All of them emerged from the palace and headed for the plaza. They approached without making any noise. They looked impassively at Hansen, the Blood Kirin, Mr. White, and Crime. So many Xenogeneics had emerged, and they were of a variety Hansen knew little about. A few of them looked familiar, but even that familiarity was vague and undefined. There was a feathered creature with six golden wings and a Ghana with draconic horns. 
but most of them were xenogenics Hansen had never seen before. They moved slowly and steadily across the ground. The power of the creatures was overwhelming, and simply sensing their presence made Hansen feel as if he was shouldering a mountain. A deified thunderbird. A deified sky spirit. A deified six-winged gold angel. A deified Ghana dragon, crime screamed. Every name crime shouted out made Hansen's heart feel worse and worse. Seeing the creatures had raised a lot of questions for Hansen, but as crime spoke, those questions died on his lips. All of the xenogenic beasts that were walking out of the palaces were deified. How is this possible? Hansen was floored. There were around 100 of the xenogenics circling the plaza. With that many deified xenogenics, the entirety of the Geno universe could be conquered. Not even the combined might of the three most powerful races could fend off this army. Using such amazing power to conduct a mere test was like using a nuclear bomb to kill a mosquito. Not a mosquito, actually. Perhaps a flea. Or a mite. The combined power of these xenogenics could destroy the whole world. This is a trick. It has to be a trick. Maybe some kind of illusion? Sacred cannot have this many deified creatures. And even if they did, the creatures cannot all be here. Hansen couldn't help but rub his eyes. He summoned his purple eye butterfly to get a proper look at the beings in front of him. And when he did, Hansen saw enough power to suppress every creature in the entire universe. When these creatures gathered together, they could destroy anything. Those xenogenia creatures had all the casual power of demon kings. Hansen suddenly felt like a little girl entering the throne room of hell. He felt weak and vulnerable, while malicious eyes washed him from the dark. Chapter 2289 Test Hansen wondered if Sacred Leader had played a joke on them. They were surrounded by so many deified xenogenics, and Hansen had just recently become a duke. Not even the deified elites that Hansen knew would have stood a chance against all the powerful xenogenics that had gathered. It's a trap. Hansen couldn't think of any way he could fight off the amount of power that had been arrayed against him. Even if he refined 13 deified blood pulses, he would only gain their blood pulse abilities. His own level wouldn't ascend to deified status, and he would still most likely be killed. On top of that, he didn't have the time to refine another 12 deified blood pulses. Is the Jade Flute in Fox Queen's hands the key to getting through this? Perhaps there is a song that can be played to soothe and lull all of the deified xenogenics. It might subdue them without the need for fighting at all, Hansen thought. It was pointless since they didn't have the flute, though. Mr. White and Crime were just as shocked by the situation they had found themselves in. There was no way for them to run. They were surrounded by too many powerful xenogenics. Even if the ruler of the extreme king came personally to save them, it wouldn't do any good. All of those scary creatures gathered in the plaza, and it became quite crowded as they filed in. The creatures watched the small group, and the weight of those eyes put fear into Hansen and even Mr. White. The deified xenogenics drew closer, pushing Hansen and the others toward the center of the palace. There was no way to withdraw. And suddenly, the jade cat coughed twice. Cough. Cough. After the jade cat coughed, the deified xenogenics halted their advance. They did not get any closer to Hansen, but they did not walk away, either. They simply remained where they were, staring expressionlessly at Hansen's group. The jade cat looked at Hansen and smiled. Don't be afraid. They will not attack you just yet. You guys have one day to travel anywhere in this city you desire. For this one day, they will not be permitted to bring you any harm. If you guys are still alive after 10 days, then you will have passed the test. We'll be hounded by 100 deified xenogenics. How are we expected to survive 10 whole days inside the city? Hansen wanted to bargain for some better terms. The Jade Cat smiled. They are not really deified xenogenics. They are just the clones of deified xenogenics that Sacred Leader created. Each of them can only unleash a single deified attack. After one attack, they will die. So, you guys still have a minuscule chance of surviving. Try your best. Oh, and right, I forgot to tell you guys. If you get into a fight with a deified Xenogenia clone, the others will back off. Only one can attack you at a time. The others won't interfere. Right. The test starts now. Try your best to survive. You have one full day to hide. You can hide anywhere you wish inside the holy town. The Jade Cat statue laid down after speaking, settling itself as if it was sleeping again. It looked like an ordinary Jade statue. 
Hansen could no longer sense any life force in it. Hansen tried asking it a few more questions, but the jade cat statue did not respond. All that was left were the scary deified xenogenic clones looking at them. Let's go. We only have one day. This is our one chance of surviving, Mr. White said. Then he stepped into the crowd of xenogenics. The scary deified xenogenics clones parted to form a path for him. The creatures wouldn't stop them from leaving. Hansen followed Mr. White out of the plaza. One hundred scary deified xenogenics watched them walk away, but none of the creatures chased after them. Mr. White, do you have a plan that can help us escape this predicament? Hansen asked. Mr. White shook his head. I am fairly sure that exiting the holy town is out of the question, to be honest with you. The only way we can get through the next ten days is to hide somewhere that the deified clones cannot find us. But I doubt that the sacred leader created a game of hide-and-seek out of boredom. He must have some other purpose here. So, no matter where we hide, we can be sure that the Xenogenics will find us. Sir, what are you saying? Should we hide or should we not hide? Crime asked with confusion. Mr. White had described the results of both options, and neither one sounded good. Hansen laughed. Mr. White explained it so clearly. We need to hide for ten days, but even so, we will be found. That suggests that there is only one way in which we can hide. And what way is that? Crime still didn't understand. Hansen had no choice but to explain. Did the Jade Cat statue not tell you clearly enough? If we are fighting one Xenogeneic, the others will leave us alone until the fight is finished. So, we need to fight one soul Xenogeneic for all ten days. If we do that, the other Xenogeneics might as well not even exist. I see. But how do we engage just one Xenogeneic for that long? Didn't the Jade Cat statue say that the deified Xenogeneics here are cloned? After one strike, their bodies will break, Crime asked. That is something you will have to ask Mr. White about. Mr. White came up with the plan first. I'm sure he's already thought of contingencies. Hansen looked at Mr. White. I do have a few ideas, but ensuring our survival over the next ten days will require the four of us to cooperate. Mr. White explained his plan. When Hansen and Crime heard it, they thought the suggestion was way too risky. However, they couldn't think of any alternative courses of action, so they agreed to do it. The four of them didn't leave the plaza to hide. They tried to leave Holy Town just to see if they could, but after that, they went back to the plaza. Their day of waiting seemed to drag on and on. They could have spent the time hiding deep within the town, but they all knew that it would have been a pointless exercise. No matter how big Holy Town was, it was still just a town. The deified Xenogeneics could use the power of their minds to scour the entire town for their prey. There were more than a hundred deified Xenogeneics there, so finding Hans Sin's group would be easy. Mr. White's plan relied on using their single day of peace to prepare. What came next would be simple. Mr. White would familiarize himself with one of the deified Xenogeneics, taking advantage of the creature's temporary docility to use his sealing techniques on it. Once he had sealed the deified clone's power, it wouldn't be able to use its deified strike. That way, they could draw out the fight to last for the entire ten days. The deified Xenogeneic would still be exceptionally strong, of course. Although only one strike needed to be sealed, it was a deified power. Mr. White could not seal the power by himself. He needed the combined might of Hansen, the Blood Kirin, and Crime to help him complete the seal. The three of them resigned themselves to the plan. As long as they didn't attack the other deified clones, the clones would just stand there in the plaza and stare at them. Remember, my four symbols seal requires four people to function. So, once the sealing begins, none of you can move. You have to keep sending power into the seal. If we lose anyone's power, the seal will break, Mr. White said seriously. Then he sent a wave of energy into Hansen, Crime, and the Blood Kirin. Strange, new symbols of light appeared on their hands. Chapter 2290 for Symbol's Seal The light symbol hummed on Han Sin's hand like an energy converter. When Hansen sent power into the light symbol, his energy was transformed into sealing power. Green dragon, white tiger, red bird, and black turtle. For beasts made up the symbols, and Hansen was represented by the red bird. As his power flowed into the symbol, the symbol swirled around in his hand like a flaming bird. Mr. White stepped in front of one Xenogeneic clone and directed Hansen, Crime, and the Blood Kirin to stand on either side of and behind the creature. This was a powerful seal that normally required many people to do what they were attempting to. 
It wouldn't be an easy task in the midst of combat, that was for sure. Usually, a person would use this technique to seal a creature that was already under their control. The technique took far too long to be useful in a fight. Fortunately, the Xenogeneic clone wasn't going to attack them during their free day. It stood there, unmoving, increasing their chances of sealing it successfully. The first attempt went smoothly. Hansen and the others surrounded the Xenogeneic from four different directions. They weren't attacked, and the Xenogeneic simply stood there looking at them. Mr. White waved at Hansen and the others, indicating they should rest a little. It was still early in the day, after all. If they fully committed to the sealing right then, they'd be wasting some of their strength. They needed to seal the creature at the last moment possible in order to save every smidgen of energy they had. After a minute of thought, Hansen said, since they aren't attacking us now, why don't we at least try the sealing to see if it works? You don't trust Mr. White? Even if the seal doesn't work, do you have another way out of this? Crime asked in a cold voice. There is nothing wrong with giving it a try, Hansen responded flatly. Mr. White nodded. Okay, then let us try. It will be a useful practice run. Following Mr. White's command, Hansen and the others cast the four symbols seal. The symbol of the red bird shivered on Hansen's hand. He felt a connection form between the bird and Mr. White's white tiger, Crime's black turtle, and the green dragon that hovered around the blood Kieran's claws. All those powers were transferred, and the four symbol seal's light became stronger. The connection between them strengthened. Update by ListNovel.com The four powers supported each other, and as the light rose, for giant shadows formed into a bysema that trapped the creature inside. The Xenogeneic found itself confined within the bysema. Its eyes flashed, and the enemy started to move. Oh no! It is going to attack us. Seal the bysema now. Mr. White shouted loudly. The four of them quickly finished casting the four symbols seal. The shadows of the green dragon, the white tiger, the red bird, and the black turtle were cast onto the Xenogeneic's body. The shadows bound the Xenogeneic. The Xenogeneic kept moving as Hansen and the others continued casting their seal. The four shadows kept seething across the Xenogeneic. The Xenogeneic tried to fight back, but it couldn't break the seal. Crime looked ill, and he said, I told you to trust Mr. White, but you just had to try it. Now we've wasted so much more of our power. What's done is done. We will just have to hold the seal and keep it going for the next ten days, Mr. White said firmly putting an end to crimes complaining. Hansen shrugged slightly and remained silent. He had known this was a possibility, but he thought they should give it a try anyway. Attempting the seal now would only anger one Xenogeneic. If it failed, only one powerful creature would be trying to kill them. But if they failed closer to the end of the first day, they might end up being attacked by whole groups of the monsters. So, Hansen would rather spend a bit more energy now than risk everything later on. Aside from the struggling Xenogeneic and the seal, the other Xenogeneics just maintained their stances and their expressionless stares. When Hansen's group confirmed that they weren't going to be attacked by the monsters around them, they felt greatly relieved. The Xenogeneic kept struggling. Although its power was sealed, it still had a deified body. Hansen and the others had to use all their power to hold the seal against the raw, physical strength of the creatures thrashing. Mr. White and the Blood Karen were half deified so they had an easier time. Crime was a top dog of the kings, so he was holding up well, too. But Hansen had only just become a duke. He hadn't been a duke for very long, so his power was lacking in comparison to the others. He had to use all of his strength just to keep the red bird's symbol of light up. Mr. White looked at Hansen and said, A duke's element is separate from your original body's astral body and celestial body. Your original body is your own genes taking the form of an element. At that stage, you must use your own power to fight. At the second stage, your astral body needs to rely on the planet beneath you. Planetary powers can be used to aid the elements of your body. For instance, a water element duke will perform much better on a water-based planet. After pausing, Mr. White continued to say, the celestial body you can access in the third stage is also known as your universal body. That body can use the power of the universe. As long as it is not separated from the universe for some reason, it has access to practically unlimited power. Hansen understood what Mr. White was talking about, but he had only just become a duke. He only had his original body, so he couldn't make use of any external powers. Plus, even if he did gain a celestial body, 
he knew that Holy Town was separated from the outside world. He couldn't access any power that was outside the town. Mr. White knew what Hansen was thinking, and so he smiled. Judging by the way you use your body, you must still be at the first stage. You only have your original body. I have an original body Gino art that might be able to help you. Perhaps you could learn it in order to ascend more easily. If you are really willing to teach me, I would be very grateful. Hansen was surprised. He hadn't expected Mr. White to volunteer to teach him a Gino art, and he wasn't sure what the sudden offer meant. Mr. White, why do you care about him? Crime exclaimed unhappily. Mr. White smiled. We are cooperating to maintain the seal, aren't we? We are all in this together. Hansen is of a lower level than us, so he will have a hard time over the course of the next ten days. If anything happens to him, we will all be destroyed. I am only doing this for myself. After Mr. White said that, crime fell silent. Mr. White paused for a moment before speaking. My Gino art isn't very impressive. I made it myself, and I never did think up a name for it. It hasn't been presented anywhere. I'll explain it as best I can, and if you think it helps, you can use it. If it doesn't, that's okay. Please tell me, Hansen said. In a quiet voice, Mr. White gave a straightforward explanation of the Gino art. Crime and the blood Kieran focused on his words as well. Crime listened seriously. Just like Mr. White said, his Gino art seemed rather simple. Even so, it was obviously quite special. Despite its simplicity, it was incredibly difficult to understand. Mr. White, your Gino art is so complicated. I am afraid he won't be able to understand it, Crime said after hearing Mr. White's Gino art. The scary creatures looked over them, as if deciding which flavor of meat to dine on first. The slavering beasts made Han Sin and the others nervous. But even so, despite all the attention directed toward them, not a single one of the Xenogeneics prepared to attack. They just stared at Han Sin's group like jewels. Acknowledging their apparent safety, Han Sin and the others felt relieved. It was fortunate that the Jade Cat statue hadn't lied to them. The deified clones really were restraining themselves, as the cat statue had said. Hansen and the others didn't dare move, though. They continued using their strength to keep the Bicema going. They kept the deified Xenogeneic clone sealed, hoping they could hold the creature there for the entire ten days. But as time ticked by, the Xenogeneic clone struggling became worse and worse. After it had been thrashing around for a while, Hansen started to feel a strain. Five days later, even the half-deified blood Kieran was beginning to fatigue. Because each part of the four symbols seal was connected, Hansen didn't have to continually use his full power. It meant that the others had to pick up his weight, though, to keep the deified Xenogeneic suppressed. So, the blood Kieran and Mr. White were using up a lot more power than Hansen was. Sweat began to trickle down Crime's forehead. It was getting hard for him, too. Things were not going as well as they had hoped. But by Hansen's estimation, if they continued using power at the same rate, they would survive all ten days of the trial. Little guys, you seem to be working very hard. I have to say, you're not doing a bad job. Suddenly, the Jade Cat statue started talking again. It spoke lazily, though, as if it had just woken up from a deep slumber. Hansen and the others were concentrating all their strength on maintaining the Four Symbols seal, however. They couldn't spare the time or effort to bother looking in the direction of the Jade Cat statue. The Jade Cat statue's voice came from behind them again. You guys are doing good, but don't you think that this would be a boring way to pass the test? You aren't going to cheat, are you? Hansen's heart jumped. If the Jade Cat statue let the rest of the Xenogeneics attack them, they would be very dead. The Jade Cat statue laughed and said, Don't worry. I cannot change the rules that sacred. Leaders set in place. I just wanted to give you a small surprise. I hate surprises, Hansen said with a tight, feral smile. But this really is a surprise. It might actually prove to be a great benefit to you guys. Of course, you will need to have what it takes to accept the surprise. The Jade Cat statue looked as if it was smiling, but it wasn't. After the cat statue's voice trailed off, Hansen heard a noise coming from the ground. It sounded like something was dragging metal chains. Hansen scanned around them with his Dong Shen aura, and then he noticed as all the deified clones began stepping away from them. Something new was approaching Han Sen's group. It was a skeleton. Or at least, it looked like a skeleton. The flesh of the creature had dried into a withered husk. Its long hair was like tufts of hay. The being wasn't dead, though. 
His limbs were bound by metal cuffs, and he walked very slowly. With every step the man took, chains grated across the ground behind him. The chained man was approaching them with his head lowered. When he got closer, Hansen could see that there were two dark holes where his eyes should have been. Dark blood wept from the holes, and the eyes were missing. Hansen and the others looked grim. They were using their powers to cast the Four Symbols' seal. If the creepy man attacked them, they wouldn't be able to block the strike without releasing the Four Symbols' seal. And that would be enough to lead to their doom. The prisoner came within ten meters of them, chains rasping across the ground with every step. He raised his head so that the two bloody holes could peer at Hansen and the others. Those two holes gave them the willies. He stopped for a moment, but then the prisoner started to move again. His slow steps took him toward Hans Sr. What the F asterisk CK? Hansen thought frantically. There were four of them, but the prisoner had decided to go for Hans Senator it was getting closer, and after another minute, it stood right behind him. Chapter 2291 Small Surprise I don't think I really understand. Please explain it to me again, Hansen said, trying to keep his shock from showing on his face. Truthfully, Hansen understood the Geno art perfectly. The Geno art was quite familiar to him, and that familiarity shook him to his core. The Geno art had an obvious connection to the Dong Shin Sutra. Both arts could benefit each other quite well, and using Mr. White's technique could aid in the development of the Dong Shin Sutra. Hansen could use the Dong Shin Sutra to absorb power from the world around him. Doing so allowed him to conserve his own energy, stretching his strength out over a longer period of time. But the Dong Shin Sutra had yet to reach Duke, so the effect wasn't particularly good. It only saved Hans in a small amount of power. Has Mr. White realized that I use the Dong Shin Sutra? Is that why he's telling about this Geno art? What is he planning? Hansen thought fast, but he didn't have enough information to guess what Mr. White was playing at. It seemed likely that Mr. White knew that Hansen could use the Dong Shin Sutra. Explaining a Geno art as simply as he had suggested that the man's mind was quite frightening. It put Hansen on red alert. If you don't mind me repeating myself, I will recite the Geno art again. Mr. White smiled. Then, he resumed talking about the Geno art. It would have been better if he had stopped speaking there, for the more he talked, the more confused crime became. Mr. White's detailed explanation of the Geno art was more difficult to understand than the Geno art itself. He began speaking about the Geno universe itself, which was something crime had never heard about before. Hansen used the Dong Shin aura to listen, and he was able to understand a bit. He pretended that he couldn't, though, and he feigned confusion. Mr. White, I'm afraid that the explanation isn't helping. I'm just getting more and more confused. Hansen presented Mr. White with a wry smile. Mr. White is so smart. Since you're just a duke, well, it is only expected that you can't understand a word that he's saying. And don't worry, I don't understand, either. It isn't about you, okay? Crime said. Mr. White shook his head and sighed. The things I have learned are a bit different from your own Geno art. It is okay that you don't understand, but try to learn as much as you can, for I can only explain it here like this. Thank you for your willingness to teach me. I'm just afraid I will never be able to learn such a Geno art, Hansen said. But he was secretly casting the Geno art Mr. White had just taught him. He gave it a try, and it worked fine. When Hansen didn't summon his Dong Shen armor, the effect of absorbing external power seemed to increase. And this was Han Sin's very first time using the ability. If the ability was already useful, then it would surely become a greater and greater benefit to him as his proficiency increased. Update by ListNovel.com Hansen still didn't know why Mr. White had given him the Geno art, but he was okay with learning something new. Hansen practiced it, and the strain of maintaining the four symbol seal decreased. The day went by pretty quickly. After the first 24 hours, the other deified Xenogeneic clones shifted slightly toward Han Sen and the others like the very hungry monsters that they were. The monsters stared at them for a whole day, and the beast's eyes were different than they had been. There was a fresh, murderous gleam in their eyes. Chapter 2292 The Prisoner at the Rear The prisoner approached Han Senator although he walked slowly, he was already very close to them. A second later, he was directly behind Han Sr. As the prisoner walked, his cuffs clinked and clanked. When he came to a stop behind Hansen, he fell completely silent. Hansen couldn't even hear the prisoner breathing or his heart beating. It was as if he no longer existed. Hansen used his Dong Shin aura to scan the prisoner, 
but he was shocked to find that he could no longer detect the prisoner's presence. Goosebumps flared across Hans Sint's body. The prisoner was standing directly behind him, but he could not feel the strange, chained man. His inability to detect the creature deeply unsettled Hans Senator, he wanted to just run away as fast as he could. But he was currently casting the Red Bird spell. If he left his position, then the four symbol seal would break. If any of the four tried to run, they'd all end up dead. The bird's nest still sat on Hans Sin's head. He forced himself not to turn around, and he thought to himself, So what if you're behind me? You can't break this bird's nest. I have nothing to be afraid of. Hansen stood where he was and did not move. He did not dare turn and look behind him. He continued to cast his powers through the red bird spell to keep the trapped Xenogeneic suppressed. But when Hansen looked at Mr. White and the others, he was given a shock. Mr. White's face looked strange, but Hansen couldn't accurately read the man's expression. Crime's expression was easier to interpret, though. He was in massive shock. He stared behind Hansen with wide eyes, as if he had seen a ghost. The blood Kieran's response was even more dramatic. It was growling at Hansen, as if in an urgent warning. What is he doing behind me? Hansen's heart felt chilled. He still couldn't detect the presence behind him. It was as if the chained man wasn't actually a creature at all, but some specter of death itself. Mr. White gulped. He looked pale, but still, he didn't say a word. His expression made Hansen even more worried. Hansen could no longer help it, so he moved his head to take a look. He couldn't turn his head very far, though, because if he moved his hands or body, he could disrupt the casting. After twisting his head to the left, he saw nothing. Then, he looked right. And still, he couldn't see anything. Hansen wished he could just twist his body around so he could properly see what the prisoner was doing. But he really couldn't move his body. Hansen couldn't keep his eyes off the other's horrified expressions, though. Their vision lingered on the space behind Hansen, which made his heart tremble in fear. F asterisk CKU. I have a bird's nest to protect me, and I have nothing to be afraid of. Hansen gritted his teeth and did not move. But suddenly, Hansen felt a chill run down his neck. It felt as if something was blowing a cold breath over his neck. Hansen's skin prickled as his back turned sore and his legs went soft. Hansen had seen many scary things in his lifetime, so he didn't frighten easily. But not being able to see the prisoner was deeply disturbing. He felt a deep chill in his heart. Don't move. Mr. White called to Hans Sr. What is he doing behind me? Hansen asked, his voice tense. It was a shame that the blood Kieran couldn't speak. If it had been able to talk, Hansen would have asked it. Crime wasn't trustworthy enough for Hansen to bother asking him, though. This is hard to explain. Mr. White frowned, and he looked pearly. It seemed as if he didn't know what to say. Seeing Mr. White's hesitation made Hansen frown. He had no clue what was going on behind him. If Hansen was in danger, Crime and Mr. White probably wouldn't want to tell him, because they wouldn't want to risk Hansen moving and breaking the four symbol seal. However, Hansen didn't think that was the reason for their behavior. If Hansen was attacked and wounded, then the four symbol seal would break. Anyway, they wouldn't stay silent and tell him not to move. If there is no actual danger, then why can they not tell me what's wrong? Hansen wondered. Hansen's attempts to figure out what was happening were getting him nowhere but his back felt colder and colder. His worry continued to deepen. Mr. White and Crime were still staring at the space behind him. The blood Kieran kept growling at Hansen, as if it wished to tell him something. Hansen could no longer resist the temptation. He summoned Bauer and asked her to take a look at the prisoner behind him. Bauer appeared on Hansen's shoulder. Hansen spoke to her. Bauer, help your daddy take a look at what this thing is doing behind him. Bauer nodded. She leaned over his shoulder and took a look behind him. She jerked in surprise and said, Dad, behind you. What is behind me? Hansen quickly asked. There is a man drawing on your back, Bowers said, after thinking. Drawing? Hansen's mind went blank for a minute. He was confused, and so he thought, The prisoner is drawing something on my back? Is he an artist? Does he love drawing on humans? Is my body too good? And he could not help but use my fine figure for a canvas? No way. If he was fond of drawing on bodies, then he should have gone and found a pretty girl to paint upon. Why bother drawing on me? Bauer, what is he drawing? Hansen quickly asked. Something else had to be going on here. Bauer leaned further over Hansen's shoulder, peering at Hansen's back, but she didn't speak. 
Bauer, what is he drawing? Hansen squeaked. He wasn't scared, he told himself. He just didn't like it. Bauer hesitated, but she eventually said, it's like, it's like the creature is drawing a person. Yeah, a woman. A woman? What kind of woman? Hansen was frozen. A skeletal prisoner had appeared out of nowhere, slinked up to his back, and started drawing a woman on him. This was 2F asterisk King Creepy, and it made Hansen feel itchy and uncomfortable. Bauer didn't seem to know how she might describe what she saw. With hesitation, she said, an ugly, ugly woman. Hansen felt his pulse pounding in his temples. An ugly prisoner was now drawing an ugly woman on his back. What the F asterisk CK was happening? Hansen's mouth was wide open. He tried to ask another question, but he had no idea what he should ask. Bauer observed his back some more, and then she said, Dad, he cannot draw anymore. Why? Hansen asked curiously. Bauer responded quickly this time. The blood of the woman coming from his hands is running dry, and there is no more paint left. What? He is using a woman's blood to draw on my back? Hansen felt as if his head was going to explode. He could not imagine the scene behind him. Chapter 2293, Passing the Test Dad, the woman has no more blood. Dad, he cracked open the woman's brain. Bauer kept reporting what was happening. Bauer, stop looking. Hansen called Bauer back into his arms. He didn't want her to see such a bloody scene. Bauer was actually quite old at this point. But in Hansen's eyes, she'd be a little girl forever. Bauer jumped off of Hansen's shoulder to sit on his chest. She looked curiously at the four symbol seal and the trapped xenogeneic that was still struggling inside. Hansen still couldn't feel anything behind him, but after hearing what Bauer had said, he felt sick with worry. The images of what she had described kept repeating inside his mind, and nothing he tried to think about could scrub them away. Jade Cat, what are you doing? Hansen finally shouted at the statue of the Jade Cat. The Jade Cat already seemed to be sleeping again, and it showed no reaction to Hansen's call. After a while, the prisoner's chains began to rattle again. As it left the space behind Hansen's back, it slowly entered his field of vision. The prisoner left in pretty much the same manner that he arrived, slowly and seemingly vacant-minded. There was one small difference, however. He was dragging the corpse of a woman behind him. To be more accurate, that was not the body of a woman. It was a female creature's body. Hansen couldn't see what the female creature's facial features had been because a large hole had been punched into the creature's head. There was a gaping cavity where the face had been. The upper part of her body was humanoid, though, and the lower body was like a snake. She looked like one of the Ghana, but unlike the Ghana, there was a spiraling horn on her head. It was silver and around one foot long, and it was reminiscent of a unicorn's horn. The snake scales of her lower body were silver, as well. They were so bright that they made her form seem a little transparent. Holes had been torn through her head and chest, but there was no blood oozing out. It was just as Bawa had originally said, in that the blood of the woman had run dry. What is that weirdo's presence here supposed to mean? Why would he draw a woman on my back? Hansen wondered, somewhat shaken. But Hansen didn't seem to be injured or impaired. His body was fine, his galactic lobster armor was fine, and it looked like the creepy prisoner guy was leaving now that he had drawn his picture. Although the whole experience had been rather disturbing, the creature hadn't actually hurt him. So, Hansen knew he'd just have to stop thinking about it. Bauer, could you use some water to wash your dad's armor? Wash away the mess he made, Hansen said to Bauer. While the paint hadn't been harmful, he was still unhappy to have it on him. Bauer jumped off of Hansen's chest and walked behind him to do as he asked. Then her surprised voice said, she is gone. What is gone? Hansen's heart jumped into his throat. The picture he drew is now gone, Bauer said. How could it be gone? Hansen was very confused about this, and so he proceeded to ask, did the picture just get smeared? Bauer shook her head. Dad, there's nothing on your back. It is very clean, and there is not even the smallest semblance of a bloodstain. The ugly woman drawing is all gone. Hansen had no idea what to make of this, so he asked Mr. White, Mr. White, what is going on? Mr. White shook his head. I don't understand any of this, either. We couldn't see your back, and we were only able to see that he was drawing something on you. I don't know what it was that he actually drew. Hansen didn't like not knowing, but there was little that he could do about it. He checked his body and noted how nothing seemed to have happened, 
so for now, he shelved all thoughts about it. Nothing strange happened after that. The four of them kept sending power into the four symbols' seal. It maintained a firm hold on the snared Xenogenia clone. Days passed, and after what felt like forever, they reached the ten-day deadline. Although the four of them were quite exhausted by this point, they had at least managed to survive the ten days. When the Xenogenics returned to their palace lairs and the doors of their palaces closed, the four of them almost collapsed. The Jade Cat statue smiled and began speaking again. Congratulations! You have passed the Sacred Leader's test. You can now receive the relic left behind by the Sacred Leader. Where is the treasure? Hansen asked, forcing himself to ignore his exhaustion. Right here, the Jade Cat statue said. The jade pillar below its feet then suddenly opened up, revealing a small jade box. It was impossible to guess what might lay inside. Hansen started forward to pick up the box, but then, his heart jumped up. He saw that Crime was holding a broken sword, slashing towards Hans Sr. The blood Kirin was angered by this, and so it roared and leaped towards Crime. But Crime's darkness covered everything, and Hans Sin's eyes were unable to pierce it. Hansen didn't move his eyes, though. The bird's nest was still on his head, and he leaped towards where the box had been before everything went black. In Crime's area of effect, all seven of Hans Sin's senses were blocked. But because he had the protection of the bird's nest, he wasn't concerned about any attacks that Crime might launch. But the next second, Hans Sin's face changed. A weird power came down to strike the bird's nest. The power locked onto the bird's nest and pulled it away from Hans Sin's head. Then, he and Bauer were tied up by something like a rope. The rope jerked them roughly to the side. The darkness faded. Hansen noticed that he and Bauer were now bound by loop upon loop of white rope. Next to them, there was a net with Hansen's bird's nest inside it. The net must have been quite special if it was able to bind a deified bird's nest. Crime held the net in one hand and the jade box in the other. Thank you for helping me obtain the sacred leader's treasure, Crime said coldly to Hansen, holding the box casually under one arm. Who are you? Mr. White frowned at Crime. Crime smiled and said, Mr. White, I am your faithful guard, Crime. You look like Crime, but Crime is just a king-class guard. You most certainly aren't. Crime wouldn't possess Prince 14's sky net. Mr. White stated flatly, his frown deepening. Crime slid the box into his chest pocket. Then, he lifted his broken knife and spoke to Mr. White. You think too much. Although I am half deified, I am still your guard. But aside from you, I have a duty to Prince 14, as well. Prince 14 wants this item, so I will have to take this back with me. Mr. White, we both work for Prince 14. You have helped me a great deal, and I will tell Prince 14 of your involvement. But this is not where this should be discussed. We need to get rid of him first, Crime said. Then his broken knife came swinging towards Hans Sr. Chapter 2294, Getting the Treasure Crime swung his weapon and the substance chain on his knife became a black snake king that looked as if it could swallow the sky. It suddenly lashed towards Hans Sr. Hansen's body surged with power, but the white rope tightened around him. The mysterious substance chain tangled him up, and it made it difficult for Hansen to gather up any semblance of defense. That knife was going to slice into ribbons. Hansen gritted his teeth. He was preparing to activate his super god spirit mode when the roaring knife light was broken. Hansen was shocked. He looked at Crime. A hand that looked like Jade had wrapped around Crime's wrist. The fingers were very long and pretty. Mr. White. Hansen could not believe what his own eyes were seeing. Mr. White was standing behind Crime, pulling his hand back through Crime's chest. But Mr. White's hand emerged perfectly clean, without a speck of blood dirtying it. Crime's broken knife fell to the ground. He looked at the bloody hole in his chest, and then looked at Mr. White with disbelief. He said, your power was said to be useless in a fight. How? How were you able to destroy my black lion body? Life is full of surprises. You should have gotten used to that by now. A beautiful white shell appeared in Mr. White's hand. He opened it and held it out toward crime. The injured crime was sucked into the shell. Visit website ourlistnovel.com. When the shell closed up, Mr. White pocketed it. He grabbed the sky net and the little box. He looked as if he was smiling but he wasn't. And to Hansen, he said, Hansen, it looks like you have lost completely. Hansen was still bound by the sky net. He gave Mr. White a wry smile. You won. So, what are you going to do with me? Kill you, of course. 
Do you really think I'd let a scary enemy like you continue to live and grow in this world? Mr. White looked at Hansen emotionlessly. Mr. White, you overestimate me. I am just a nameless soldier. Hansen didn't move. He summoned all his power as he continued to stare at Mr. White. He was going to take a risk. Mr. White turned to the cat statue as he gripped the sky net, ignoring Hansen and Bauer. Nine life cat? Can we go now? Hansen was shocked. Mr. White knew the jade cat statue was a nine life cat. The nine life cat statue stared at Mr. White. It remained unmoving as it coldly said, if you guys pass the test, so it is entirely up to you whether you come or go. There is no need to ask for my permission. Goodbye. Mr. White tugged the sky net and dragged Hansen and Bauer out of Holy Town. This time, the power of the town didn't prevent them from leaving. Mr. White pulled Hansen and Bauer out of the town with ease and returned to that area of dark water. Mr. White's other hand glowed with holy light as it held the jade stone box. The light was able to keep the darkness at bay, at a distance of around three meters from them. He eventually pulled Bauer and Hansen safely out of the trench. Hansen had thought Mr. White would kill them in Holy Town, but he didn't. And after he left that place, he didn't try to make a quick getaway. He took Hansen and Bauer into the Big White Whale, instead. Fox Queen and Isha's fight seemed to have ended, since there was no more movement in the sea. It was unclear which of the two might have emerged victorious, though. There was no sign of either of them. Mr. White brought Hansen and Bauer into the Big White Whale. He smiled and looked at Hans Sr. Now I can kill you without any worries. Have you thought up any escape ideas? Why didn't you kill me in Holy Town? Hansen asked with confusion. You really think that town hid the real treasure? Mr. White asked in an amused tone. It didn't? Hansen asked. It could have, but only if the sacred leader went mad. It would have taken utter insanity to spend so much power and effort constructing a place to hide his own treasure. Mr. White smiled. This place must have a secret that you haven't even imagined yet. Aside from that, the picture on your back looks pretty special. I thought the drawing was gone. Hansen was shocked. Mr. White laughed and said, You were too naive. Just because something disappears, that doesn't mean it is gone. I didn't recognize the person who drew on you, but I do know that he was drawing a creature known as Ancient Blood Dragon Lady. It is a mutant, deified Xenogeneic. Her blood is her mutant Xenogeneic gene. I don't think such powerful blood could disappear so easily. Hansen heard this and was shocked. He had never thought that thing might have been a mutant deified creature. Why? Why did he draw on me? Hansen asked in confusion. I do not know. Perhaps ever since the beginning, you were the chosen one. Mr. White's expression hardened. But it doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to kill you, so everything will end. After that, Mr. White looked angry. He yanked the sky net, and Hansen and Bauer were pulled in front of him. His hand reached out to grab Hans Sr. Hansen remembered how Crime's body was easily perforated by Mr. White's hand. He was shocked and he was about to activate his super god body. But when Mr. White waved his hand, the sky net loosened enough to release the bird's nest. The bird's nest returned to Hans Sr. Mr. White, this is, Hansen caught the bird's nest, and he looked at Mr. White with confusion. Mr. White put away the sky net, and he tossed the jade box towards Hans Sr. Hansen caught the little jade box, his confusion growing. He had no idea what was going on. Mr. White smiled at Han Senator his muscles and bones began to shift and writhe, and so too did his face. Not long after, Mr. White became someone else. His presence was greatly changed. Mr. White now looked younger. He looked no more than twenty years old, but his body carried a special sort of presence. It gave Hansen the feeling that this man had seen and lived through everything. He was like a person that oversaw a match of chess. Hansen's mouth opened wide. You. How is it you? Hansen screamed, pointing at him. Why would it not be me? Mr. White looked at Hansen with interest. Aren't you in the sanctuaries? How, how did you get out? Hansen spoke only half of what he wished to. He then suddenly thought of Blood Legion and the Shura, who both had a way to leave. It now didn't seem so strange that this person had been able to leave the sanctuaries. It is a long story. To summarize, I thought I'd be able to break the vacuum and become a god in this world. But who knew that this was the place I would actually come to? It was quite a disappointment, all in all. Mr. White shrugged, looking regretful. You. I cannot believe it, Hansen mumbled, still frozen. 
Hansen knew this man. They hadn't spent much time together, but Hansen remembered him. That was because this man was the real heir of the Xi'an men. But Hansen had only learned the Dong Xian Sutra from Dong Xinzi. That counted for half of the Xi'an men students. Chapter 2295 The Extreme King's Secret Hansen looked at that man, who was similar to his age. He coughed awkwardly and hesitantly asked, Um, so, what should I call you? In the past, Hansen had received a secret Xi'an men skill from the man. But the man said he wasn't going to take any students. And Han Sin was also able to obtain Dong Xin Zi's legacy. He didn't know which of the two was a more important figure. The man laughed and said, Names are merely symbols. When someone practices as much as I have, they've already given such titles up. You should just keep on calling me Mr. White to make sure that my identity within the Extreme King doesn't get exposed. You are going back to the Extreme King? Han Sin asked with surprise. Mr. White smiled and said, the extreme king is in some scary hole for beasts to fester in. There are many resources to obtain. To be fair, it is a fine place to continue with one's practice. Why wouldn't I go back? Then how are you going to explain what happened here? Hansen asked, holding up the little box. Crime was dead, and Mr. White had given the box to Hans. Senator Hansen was afraid that if he returned, he would be unable to report to Prince 14. Everything will work itself out, if given the time. Use your heart. Think, hear, and see. Hold on to everything you can in this world. There is a solution to each and every woe. After that, Mr. White gave Hansen a card. This is what I have been thinking about over all these years. You can take a look, but remember, do not put the stock of your belief too deeply into anything. You still need to form your own opinions on things in this life. A portion of the real Xi'an men requires one to practice with the faith of their own heart. I have no time to take care of it. My Xi'an Min legacy has probably come to an end on this day. You count as half of the Xi'an Min members. I hope that in the future, you will find a way to continue the teachings of the Xi'an Min and pass on my techniques. You don't need to ask anyone to join the Xi'an Min formally, but the Xi'an Min will be lucky enough just to have one or two out there that have really devoted themselves to the learnings. Visit website ourlistnovel.com. Hansen did not reject the plea. He gladly accepted the card he was given. He knew Mr. White wasn't too personally invested in all of this. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given Hans and Schwantian's secret skill before. There were many religions and parties working in the world, but most religions only taught a person what to do and what to believe in. Only Xi'an men taught a person how to explore and find their own understanding of the world, their own connection within the workings of the universe. So, it would be very difficult for the Xi'an men to become famous. It wasn't explicitly defined, so it couldn't compete on the same wavelength as other teachings and religions. That was because this teaching confused people. Most people wanted to be comforted. They wanted something to guide them through the hardships of life. But Xin Min was about having to think about things yourself. You had to take charge of your own fate and explore the unknown. The future was full of unknowns and variables. It was tough. People that didn't have the required intelligence or endurance could never make it through. So, it wasn't beyond belief that Xi'an Min fell into oblivion. The road of Xi'an Min was not one that many would willingly choose. After Mr. White spoke, he looked at the little box in Han Sen's hand. He said, If my assumptions about the box are correct, then it doesn't actually contain the sacred leader's treasure. It is just a red herring. The real treasure still resides someplace in Holy Town. But our combined strength still isn't enough to explore all of that town's secrets. When we have both become deified, we can return and resume exploration of the town. Mr. White, what is the picture upon my back? Hansen still felt nervous when he thought about that painting. It was way too weird. Mr. White thought for a moment, then said, Ancient blood dragon lady's blood was used as ink. A picture was drawn upon your back. I couldn't see the picture, and so I can't make a sound assertion. But do not worry, as I have made some calculations of the future on your behalf. Following a terrible incident, there were still some good fortunes to be had. Whatever the picture was, it wasn't a bad thing. Good fortune following something terrible? That means something terrible is going to happen. Hansen was shocked. Mr. White laughed and said, You're in for a rough ride. It would be nice if you didn't tell me these things so bluntly. Hansen gave a wry smile. Mr. White quietly said, When you follow Isha back to Narrow Moon, you should be prepared. 
I believe that the extreme king will eventually summon you to their ruler's kingdom. Hansen was curious, so he had to ask, Mr. White, how did you end up becoming part of the extreme king? Mr. White quietly said, I disguised myself as a hybrid of the extreme king so I could stay among them. I was drawn to their resources, but I also learned something very interesting there. I stayed so I could find out more about it. What was it? Hansen asked again. We humans have the extreme king's blood pulse gene. Although it is only a small smidgen of the stuff, it does exist. And that is how I was able to successfully pass myself off as one of the extreme king without being discovered, Mr. White said. I guessed as much. Hansen nodded. He had considered this possibility before, and if Mr. White had followed the same line of thought, there was no reason to believe he was incorrect. Mr. White continued to say, when the extreme king become king class, they can awaken their king body. The king bodies are very similar to the super god bodies we have in the sanctuaries. There's one primary difference, however. Our super god bodies are independent, while their king bodies are not independent. What do you mean? Hansen didn't understand. Mr. White groaned and went on to explain, What I mean to say is that our super god bodies are a part of us. Their king bodies seem to have a connection with the outside world and some mysterious power. I am still investigating it. There are so many questions I have been unable to find answers for. I cannot explain everything. After chatting with Hansen, Mr. White said, I should go. If you head left when you leave, you should soon come across Isha. Mr. White left, but Hansen didn't go after Isha just yet. He walked over to the skeleton sitting in the command chair of the white whale. He took off the clothes that were on the skeleton, and then he put the skeleton in a box. He planned on finding a good place to bury the man when he returned. It was a crystallizer. It was like someone of the same race. After thoroughly cleaning the pieces of clothing, Hansen put them on. He put the transparent eye patch on his head, and he felt as if his thoughts were spreading. His body and his vision expanded. That feeling could not be explained. It was like the whale was becoming a part of his body. Waves of information rolled through eye patch and were downloaded into his mind. To put it simply, Hansen could now use his mind to control the white whale. Piloting the machine was as simple as using his own body. Hansen guided the big white whale to the left. And there he found Isha. Isha was swimming through the sea. She saw the big whale and surged towards it. Hansen quickly jumped out of it to prevent any misunderstandings. My queen, where is Fox Queen? Hansen asked. Isha shook her head. She escaped. Then we should get out of here, too. I got the item from Holy Town. Let's leave now. Hansen then piloted the white whale out of the Holy Spirit Sea with Isha. When they reached the maze, Hansen put away the whale. The enormous whale really was just like the beetle. It could shrink with its space technology. It shrank until it disappeared into the eye patch. It was like a little whale placed inside a bottle, and it looked magical. Chapter 2296, Can't Stop You Isha and Hansen returned to the base of the Ice Blue Knights, where they ran into Ice Blue Knight King. It was fairly obvious that he had been unable to navigate the palace maze, and had thus decided to return. When he saw Isha and Hansen come back together, Ice Blue Knight King's eyes widened. Knife. I am so glad to learn that you are still alive, Ice Blue Knight King said, coming up to her. I'm afraid that my survival might not be a good thing for you, Isha growled. Ice Blue Knight King frowned. Isha, what makes you say that? I am alive. That means no one is allowed to bully my student. Do you understand now why that might not be a good thing? It would have been better for you if I had remained dead, Isha said, her voice as hard as stone. Ice Blue Knight King fidgeted awkwardly, but he said, I was just doing my job. I had no choice in the matter. There were some things I just had to do. I don't care about your job. Let me ask you something. Did you drag my student into the Ice Blue Knights by force? Against his will? Isha stared at Ice Blue Knight King as she spoke. Ice Blue Knight King looked glum, and he admitted, Yes. Were you the one who captured him? Isha asked. Yes, Ice Blue Knight King said. If you were unable to look after him, why would you drag my student all the way out here? Is that how you manage the Ice Blue Knights? Isha hissed. Ice Blue Knight King could not speak. His face turned red. Another Ice Blue Knight who was accompanying Ice Blue Knight King stepped forward to angrily tell her off. Knife, don't be so rude. You are a member of the Ice Blue Knights yourself. How can you speak like that to your captain? From now on, I have no affiliation with the Ice Blue Knights. It's over. 
Yisha looked at them all with disdain. Ice Blue Knight King frowned and said, Knife, I understand the reasons for this mood of yours, but there are some things you can't just say. I will pretend I did not hear what you just said. If you want to talk, we can do so later and in private. There is nothing more for us to talk about. Let's go. Hans Senior Isha turned around to leave. Knife, don't be ridiculous. The Ice Blue Knights have rules. You are a member of the Ice Blue Knights, and you were born to be an Ice Blue Knight. Furthermore, you will one day die on behalf of the Ice Blue Knights. The Ice Blue Knights would never permit one of their members to turn traitor, and furthermore, the Extreme King would not allow. Ice Blue Knight King trailed off, a shocked look crossing his face. Isha's body had filled with purple air. Like a demon, she covered the entirety of the Ice Blue Knight base with her power. Suddenly, everyone in the base looked very pale. The weight of her suppression lay on them so heavily that they could barely stand. Deified. You became deified. Ice Blue Knight King and all the other Ice Blue Knights were stunned. I'm sorry. Do you mind repeating what you were telling me again? Isha turned an unyielding gaze on Ice Blue Knight King and the others. The King-class Ice Blue Knights had all turned pale. No one dared look Isha in the eyes now. Ice Blue Knight King had also paled, and a series of emotions crossed his face, too quickly to recognize. He ultimately sighed, and said, I have my own reasons to want you to stay, but since you are already deified, I suppose the Ice Blue Knights don't stand a chance in keeping you here. In that case, I give you permission to leave. Isha did not look at Ice Blue Knight King. She took Hansen with her and departed the Ice Blue Knight base. My queen, that was awesome. Those Ice Blue Knights all looked so cocky, but they were ready to pee themselves before your glory, Hansen told her as he piloted the White Whale away from the base. After Isha and Hansen departed the Ice Blue Knights, they used the Big White Whale to travel through space. They were headed back to Narrow Moon. Isha was holding Bauer. She fed Bauer pieces of fruit as she spoke. The ten sets of knights of the Extreme King. They all sound so powerful. They inspire fear across the Geno universe, spreading the belief that every knight has the power to destroy a race. But inside the Extreme King, the knights are still just pawns. They do the dirty work and little more. They aren't given important missions. If any of the members of the knights manage to become deified, they are permitted to leave. They are no longer bound to the knights. This is a rule of the Extreme Kings. Ice Blue Knight King could not have fought against that. A powerful regiment of knights like the Ice Blue Knights are still only considered pawns? Hansen was shocked to hear this. They don't have any deified members. If you think that is the primary army of the Extreme King, you are profoundly underestimating their might. Isha smiled, then went on to say, The primary army of the Extreme King is composed of the Royal Knights. They only recruit pure members of the Extreme King, however. And all entrants have to be at least King class. They have very high requirements when it comes to having the right blood and background. Aside from the Royal Knights, the Extreme King have many other organizations as well. Most of those are simply less famous. The Extreme King are so strong that very few races are able to compete with them. Even higher races like Sky Palace wouldn't stand a chance against the Extreme King in a fight. They rely on the power of the Very High to make the Extreme King avoid them. That's the only reason that the Extreme King have never touched Sky Palace. I see. Hansen did not understand how the Extreme King worked. He thought for a minute, then asked, Then what is Narrow Moon to the Extreme King? We do not belong to anyone. Isha sighed, and then said, I told you before. Our elder was a servant of Hell King at one point. But Hell King's time has long since passed. Now, the ruler of the Extreme King is known as White King. Narrow Moon has never had a deified member before. But becoming deified would change little for rebate politics. A rebate would never be considered pure of race, and so they could never choose a side. They would be puppets. As long as my queen is here, the rebate will become one of the most famous high races in the entire universe. Hansen was quick to lick her boots. Isha was his biggest supporter. The safety and security of Hansen and his friends and family all depended on Isha. Isha rolled her eyes. Tell me what happened in Narrow Moon. Hansen told her about everything that had transpired in Narrow Moon. He did not exaggerate anything. But even so, Isha's face darkened after hearing it all. They divided up all of my possessions? They were cruel to my one and only student? They're all such rotten bullies. Hansen's heart felt touched. If she was saying things like that, 
then that meant he really was quite important to her. It is okay that they bullied my student, but they stole my palace and dirted up all my things. I cannot allow this, Isha said angrily. Hansen was touched before, but now he was speechless. He rubbed his nose and said, Yeah, you cannot allow that. You are going to have to teach them all a lesson. Chapter 2297 The Only Queen As the white whale left the ice blue system, Hansen guided it towards where Night River King had been stationed. He was unable to find anything out of the ordinary there, however, and he couldn't find a single trace of that weird purple stuff that Night River King had mentioned repeatedly. Hansen even wanted to see the ice blue knight who had taken over Night River King's position, but the knight hadn't seen anything strange during his time stationed there. Weird. What was that purple thing Night River King was talking about? What about the journal entries he made in code? Hansen didn't understand, but he didn't plan on lingering in the system to figure it out, either. Hansen turned the white whale out of the system, plotting a course back to Narrow Moon. He didn't see under overbearing again, and neither did he see the black hole spider. They did encounter many more of those galactic shrimp. The attacks of the shrimp were unable to penetrate the defenses of the white whale, though. And added to that, none of the creatures were as fast as the white whale. Having a powerful ship like the white whale ensured their safety as they traveled, assuming that they only ran into ordinary xenogeneics like the galactic shrimp. If they got into trouble, it would be because they bumped into a creature like under overbearing or the black hole spider. Of course, even if that happened, they had the deified elite Isha on board. They had good luck in their travels. Isha and Hansen were able to depart the systems of chaos with absolute safety. They would soon be back in Narrow Moon. Dude, what happened? Why has every noble across every planet been ordered to go to Full Moon Hall? Haven't you heard? Knife Queen is back. Knife Queen is back? How is that possible? I thought she died in the systems of chaos. That's what all the nobles thought, too. That's why they plundered her legacy inventory without fear. But she has really come back. And not just that. She's come back deified. What? Queen has become deified? This is awesome. We rebate finally have a deified elite in our ranks. Who would dare underestimate us now? Queen is way too powerful. Tiki, it might be good for us, but what about the nobles who divided up her things? They stole her legacy and crushed her student Hansen under their feet. Now that she has come back deified, they must be shivering in their boots. They had it coming. They think they're so high and mighty, bullying a student. I'm happy that those nobles are going to get told off. They always bully us, don't they? And we can never fight back. Now that they are in trouble. Well, it's what they deserve. As Narrow Moon's people were discussing Knife Queen's return, a serious discussion was being held in Full Moon Hall. No, absolutely not. Miss Knife. Hansen is just an outsider. He does not have what it takes to be our holy child, an elder said, shaking his head forcefully. Flower King said, Knife. Miss. Don't you think that this is a little inappropriate? The holy child has always been the best and most promising of the rebate. Hansen isn't even one of our kind. Even if we force him to become our holy child, the rest of our citizens will vehemently object to the selection. Miss Knife, please think about this. Black Moon King liked Hansen, but even he did not think that this was right. They risked angering their entire race. All the nobles were arguing against Isha's decision to elect Hansen as the Holy Child. Full Moon Hall was filled with so many shouting voices that it was louder than a supermarket. Moon Will King raised his hand to tell everyone to quiet down. Then, he looked at Isha and said, Knife, we were not considerate to you and Hansen in your absence. We can give him whatever he deserves, but the position of holy child is something of gross importance. It affects the very legacy and glory of our race. Allowing an outsider to take this position is in no way appropriate. You must think about this decision some more. Are you guys done? Isha sat at the head of the conference table. She coldly looked upon all of the nobles that had gathered there. All of those nobles felt a massive chill as her eyes came to stare at each of them in turn. They fell utterly silent under the weight of her gaze. The same was true for Flower King, as it was all the others. After everyone stopped talking, Isha spoke in a slow, deliberate voice. What if I insist that Hansen becomes our holy child? Knife Queen, if you, if you insist, then you'll have to forgive us for being unreasonable. The elders will never agree to this notion, and I am sure none of the kings here in Full Moon Hall agree to it, either. 
The members of the Council of Elders kept trying to convince her. Knife Queen, we are objecting to your plan in order to preserve the legacy and glory of the rebate. We cannot allow everything we have built for the rebate to be destroyed. Are you saying I am destroying the rebate as a whole? Isha asked coldly. Knife Queen, that is not what we meant. The Elder wanted to say more, but Isha cut him off. Isha swept her gaze across the nobles and stopped at Moonwill King. I called you all here to tell you of the decision I have made. I did not call you here for you to voice your opinions on the matter. Starting from today, Hansen is the holy child of the rebate. If you have a problem with the decision, let me hear it now. Many of the nobles were frozen. Although they objected, no one wished to square off against Isha. They all looked at Moonwill King. Moonwill King frowned and looked at Isha. What if we all object at once? Isha laughed. She stood up, ignoring Moonwill King. She looked down upon all of the nobles and slowly said, Listen up, people. From now on, Narrow Moon is my Narrow Moon. The rebate have only one queen. Whoever follows me will live, but anyone who seeks to betray me will die. You can object, but if you directly disobey one of my commands, I will consider you an enemy. I do not mind an injection of fresh blood to fill up the ranks of Narrow Moon. Over the next few months, political instability swept through the rebate. The people in power kept changing, and families rose and fell on a daily basis. Hansen really admired Isha's decisiveness. Once she made her mind up, she took sole control of rebate society without looking back. She lacked the strength to make such a bold power grab before, but now that she was deified, she could suppress anyone who rose against her. She ruled single-handedly, which allowed complicated issues to get resolved much faster. But other problems began to appear. There were many different factions within rebate society, and no one could say for certain if Isha would be able to unite the fragmented society while maintaining her dictatorship. Some issues could not be solved through power alone. Claiming the throne had been Isha's first step, but there was a long road ahead of her. Hansen was confident in Isha, but he honestly didn't pay much attention to the political turmoil of the rebate. He was busy investigating the information given to him by Mr. White. The techniques of the Xin men were very deep. There was a great deal of information to sift through, which included more than just a few Geno arts. Some of what Hansen read would take a few hundred years to truly comprehend. Chapter 2298 Deified Speed There were many things that couldn't be truly understood by merely reading a book. Instead, they had to be figured out by each individual. The teachings of the Xin men were this sort of knowledge. Hansen planned to find a few people that could research the Xian Min information on his behalf and determine what content might be suitable for humans to learn. He also wanted to establish a special school in the Alliance that would teach the Xian Min techniques to other humans. He wanted to pass on the knowledge and expand the lineage of the Xian Min. It was just as Mr. White had said, if one or two people in every ten million were able to follow the righteous path of Xian Min, then that would be enough. Surprisingly, Ji Yin and expressed an interest in the subject. Hansen quickly turned the project over to her. But Ji Yin Ran didn't do as Hansen hoped. Instead of building a school for the purpose of teaching the Xian Min philosophy, she opened up a martial hall. In it, she would start by teaching the Xian Min martial arts, whereas the philosophies of the Xian Min Wei would be taught at a later time. No one will treasure something that is earned very easily. And the Xian Min way of thinking is not suitable for everyone. It requires too much heart. By teaching them this way, the philosophies are likely to be accepted by more people, Ji Yenran explained. Ji Yenran's line of thinking made sense to Han Senator. He had only learned the secret techniques of the Xian Min. Anyway, he didn't actually understand the core concepts of the Xian Min way himself. Potential students would have absolutely no experience with the Xian Min techniques going in, so it would likely be a waste of time for them to learn. Not many people would ever be able to understand this stuff. If we can't even start a school, do you really think your martial hall will work? Hansen asked, purely to be contrary. Ji Yeren laughed. This will be easy. We only need your big face for an advertisement, and our doors will be swarmed with upper-class socialites begging to sign up. They only need to hear that these techniques were practiced by the great Han Senator. I wager they'd fight to the death and use any trick in the book to get their kids accepted into our martial hall. Mr. White's intention was to see the Xian men expanded. If you approach things like this, you are only serving the needs of the upper class. Hansen frowned. Ji Yenren laughed and said, Don't worry. 
Over the years, most ideas start with high society. Once an idea has been accepted by the wealthy and powerful, it is more easily disseminated to the lower class. This is especially true when it comes to the ideals of the Xi'an men. In ancient times, famous philosophers and scholars would embark on lengthy journeys to convince people of all different societal levels of their ideals. Now, we just need time and advertisements. Honey, don't work yourself to the bone. You should bring on some added help. Hansen could not be bothered to help her himself, of course. If she was willing to shoulder the responsibility, then that was fine with him. The box Hansen had taken from Holy Town was locked, so he couldn't open it. He had tried to pry it open in many different ways, but nothing worked. Even Isha's power had been insufficient to break the jade stone box. Because Hansen hadn't been able to find out what was inside, he put the box away for the moment. Instead, he turned his attention to the bone needle. It was the one Hansen took from the palace mace. There were twelve drops of deified blood still inside it. They represented twelve different deified blood pulses. Hansen did not use them. First, he wanted to research them. Because Hansen's body still contained more ghost bone power than he could use, he currently had no need for the energy that the deified blood pulses offered. He pondered the blood pulses for a while, and he eventually decided to have a drop anyway. Hansen chose to consume the drop he had retrieved from the blood demon. It was of the blood element. He wanted to see if it might help his blood pulse sutra. Hansen lifted the bone needle above his chest, and then he thrust it into his heart. This was not an intravenous injection like one would receive from an ordinary doctor. If a normal person tried this as Hansen did, they would most definitely die. Do not try this at home. The bone needle pierced right through his heart, and a drop of deified blood spilled into him. Hansen was about to begin refining the deified blood when he suddenly heard an announcement play in his head. Successful infusion of deified gene. Deified gene plus one. Deified progress is one slash one hundred. After that announcement, Hansen felt a scary power explode in his heart and sweep into every corner of his body. His cells shuddered as the new power surged through him, and he began to change. His body felt like he was shedding, sloughing off layer upon layer of old cells. This entire process lasted a whole day before coming to an end. Trails of a black substance littered the floor, like the flaky remains of a dead snake. It looked quite scary. Hansen, Super God Spirit Body Gene Battle Body, Mutant Blood, Duke, Spell, Marquise, Dongshin, Marquise, Jade Skin, Duke, Level, Duke, Duke Genes, 17, Deified Progress, 1 slash 100, Lifespan, 1100, Hansen was shocked. He did not know what Deified Progress meant. Are Deified Genes different from the genes that come before? What does Deified Progress mean? Does this mean I will be deified once the number reaches a hundred? I can achieve deified status without maxing out any other genes? Hansen could not figure out what was going on. Hansen studied himself after receiving his one deified gene. His body had changed. It was like his genes had all improved. What hadn't improved, though, was his fitness. It was still at the level of a duke. Hansen tried to refine another deified drop of blood. The process was exactly the same. Hansen's body changed again, and he received an additional deified gene point. His deified progress became 2 out of 100. His fitness did not increase much. But if he was able to earn deified genes, that meant it was a power that humans could accept. That relaxed many of Hansen's worries, and he absorbed the rest of the deified blood. Over the next two weeks, Hansen refined his deified blood. His deified progress became 12 out of 100, and after the refining process, his fitness increased by quite a bit. But strangely, Hansen didn't gain any special blood pulse powers after receiving the deified blood pulses. Where can I get more deified genes? Once I reach 100, I guess I'll be able to find out what it does, Hansen thought to himself. It would be too difficult to kill deified beings by himself, though. At his current strength, it was an impossible task. It's a shame that the little red bird ate my son Raven. If it hadn't, I could have given it a try. Perhaps I could eat the flesh of deified creatures, Hansen thought to himself. Thinking about the little red bird, Hansen checked on the egg inside the bird's nest again. Hansen was shocked. A number of weird substance chains had appeared from the nest and were drilling into the red egg. The red color of the egg was shining brightly, as if it was being consumed by a red fire. Chapter 2299 
The little red bird hatches. Is the little red bird about to hatch? Hansen thought in surprise. But as he watched, the color gradually drained from Hansen's face. The substance chains connected to the bird's nest started to pull back into the egg, and the nest began to fall apart piece by piece. Pieces of dry grass fell away from the nest, turning to dust in midair. Before they reached the ground, they had dissolved into nothing. Oh no. Is this little guy going to drain all the power out of the nest? Hansen reached out to save the nest, but when his hand touched the red flame, his body aged and withered. Within a second, he was so old that he looked to be on the verge of death. Hansen jerked his hand back. When his hand was no longer close to the red flame, his body returned to normal. He didn't look old anymore. The sight of the disintegrating bird's nest made Hansen's heart bleed. And there was another reason that this was a very serious problem. Queen Bai Wei had told him to hold on to the bird's nest. What if Queen Bai Wei returned for the missing nest? What would he do then? That line of thinking was pointless. However, the egg had already absorbed most of the nest's power. The dry grass had turned into dust, and there was nothing he could do to reverse the process. The egg's red flame burned hotter and hotter, and the egg itself became thinner and more transparent. As the egg became translucent, he could see what was inside it. The little red bird was still curled inside the egg, sleeping peacefully. Its body was full of fire, and it looked as if it was awaking from its slumber. When eggshell became paper thin, it finally cracked. The shell crumbled into nothing, burning away in the fire. The little red bird fell out. It opened its wings, and flames roared out of its body. It became a red phoenix. It immediately flew around in the air. It circled Hansen three times, nodded at him repeatedly, then flew down to settle on his shoulder. That movement shocked Hans Senator the fire on its body was not an ordinary fire. Hansen had only just touched it, and he had almost died of old age. He worried that if the bird landed on him now, he'd grow so old that he'd crumble into dust himself. Hansen tensed as the little red bird landed. Its fire was gone, at least. It now really did look just like a little red bird. It landed on Hansen's shoulder in exactly the same way that it used to. Hansen sighed. Fortunately, the little red bird had some modicum of intelligence. If it hadn't restrained its power, things might have turned out poorly for him. Little Red. Bauer came waddling in from the outside. She sounded so happy when she saw the little red bird. The little red bird was sitting quietly on Hansen's shoulder, but when it heard Bauer, it perked up immediately. It flew towards Bauer's hand and allowed Bauer to stroke its feathers. The bird looked as if it enjoyed the attention, and it kept its head there for Bauer to stroke. What is this? I am your master, you know. Hansen lifted his lip. He looked at the little red bird with an unfriendly smile. The little red bird seemed to acknowledge Hansen's expression, so it flapped its wings and flew quickly behind Bauer. It peeked at Hansen by poking its head over Bauer's shoulder. This guy ate the flesh of the sun raven. It should be deified, no matter what. Why is the guy still so small? Hansen was confused. But the power within the little red bird was proof of its rank. Not even Hansun could withstand its fire for a single second. It was definitely a deified creature. Those days, Hansen felt good. After Isha made him the rebate's holy child, he received a lot of resources. Planet Eclipse remained under his control, and he was given another eight planets and a slew of different treasures as well. Even more resources would come Hans Sin's way in the future, but he had too much of that ghost bone power still within him. He didn't need any more resources right now. So, for the moment, he planned to put everything he received in storage. Hansen had brought many spirits to Planet Eclipse, and they left the planet to explore the Geno universe when they became Marquises. Six Paths King, Mingyu, and Moment Queen had already begun their journeys. Hansen didn't worry about the safety of Six Paths King, and Mingyu left with Gu Qiqing. Han Xin wanted Moment Queen to stay by his side, but she refused. She wanted to level up alone. Hansen didn't force her to stay. Moment Queen had been with him for quite some time. In their early days together, Han Sound came to her as a threat. But eventually, after much time, he won her over. They had enough trust in each other that he was comfortable bringing her to the Geno universe. Things had been going well for Hansen lately, but it couldn't last. Life soon proved that there was always something for Hansen to worry about. He received word that an envoy of the Extreme King would be coming to visit Narrow Moon. This time, the leader of the envoy would be the 14th Prince by Tsonglong. When he heard the name, Hansen's worry deepened. 
Prime had served Prince 14. The extreme king delegation claimed that they were visiting to congratulate Isha on her ascension to becoming deified. But such a simple courtesy wouldn't usually require Prince 14's personal attendance. Amongst a smaller race like the Rebate, a deified warrior was practically a god. For the extreme king, though, achieving deified status just made someone exceptional. They wouldn't send a delegation all this way just to congratulate Isha on an achievement that many of their own members had made. When Hansen learned that Bai Wei was a part of the envoy, he knew that Mr. White had been correct. He would be forced to go with the extreme king. If Mr. White's guess is correct, going with the extreme king will be very dangerous for me. Zero and Mingo shouldn't go, because I might not be able to protect them from the extreme king. They should stay in Narrow Moon under Isha's protection. They will be treated well, and now that I have resources, they should become dukes without too much difficulty. It might even be possible for them to make it to king rank. I have to take the Blood Kirin, though. Its power can surely help. But should I bring the Little Red Bird? Hansen was hesitating. Hansen was deep in thought, but he looked up suddenly turning his face toward the entrance of the garden. There, he saw a blue-clothed man leading a lady in white into his garden. The woman in white was Queen Bai Wei. Hansen didn't know who the blue-clothed man was, but judging from the way he walked, Hansen could guess that the man was Prince 14 by Tsang Long. Hansen wasn't surprised that they had come looking for him, but he was surprised that no one had warned him before the two showed up in his garden. Normally, someone should have reported their arrival. Even if they forced their way in, someone should still have gotten a message to Han Sr. But Han Sen had received no warnings. Business in the base continued as usual. But Song Long brought Bai Wei right into the deepest part of the garden. Han Sen frowned and examined Bai Song Long. He looked like a man in his thirties. He was not pretty, but he had a noticeable air of casual strength about him. He walked as if he had no cares in the world. He looked so free. Although he was walking through Han Sen's garden, Bai Tsang Long behaved as if he was at home. He walked up to Han Sen and sat down next to him. He picked up the teapot and teacup upon the stone table and poured himself a cup of tea. He said, This tea is fine, and the people here are great. Chapter 2300 Recruit This cup of tea for a part of a Duke Senegeni Chin. I appreciate the exchange, Han Sen said politely. Bai Tsang Long looked surprised. Then he smiled and said, Good, good, good. I like greedy people. After that, Bai Song Long's smile disappeared. He looked at Hansen seriously and said, I want you. How much are you worth? 100 king class Xenogeneic jeans, Hansen said. Good. That is far cheaper than I expected. You are certainly worth the price, Bai Song Long answered without hesitation. He nodded vigorously. For one year, Hansen finished. Bai Song Long looked at Hansen with shock. 100 king class Xenogeneic jeans was not a high price for Prince 14 of the Extreme King. But 100 king class Xenogeneic jeans for a measly year of service from a duke? That was something that had never happened before. For that price, Prince 14 could have bought a lifetime of service from 12 dukes. How much will it cost to buy you permanently? Bai Song Long asked. His voice was curious, but not angry. 100 king class Xenogeneic jeans for a year is a fixed price. I offer no sales or bulk rates here. You buy each year, for as long as you want me, Hansen said with sincerity. Bai Song Long laughed. He pulled out a tablet and set it down on the table. He said, I will use this to purchase your services for a hundred years. I am leaving tomorrow. It is your decision whether or not you will choose to accompany us. After that, Bai Song Long stood up and left. He did not look back. Hansen looked at the tablet on the table. It was a green jade tablet that was around the size of a man's hand. Both sides bore depictions of dragons, and they each looked as if they were clutching a ball between their claws. On both sides of the tablet, the name Song Long was written. This is Brother 14's Royal Guard tablet. You need to be at least king class to be considered one of his royal guard, Bai Wei explained. Although Prince 14 had left, she was still standing there, staring at Han Sr. I am just a minor duke. I'm not worth Prince 14 bending the rules for. I assure you, Hansen said, while playing with the tablet. Brother 14 came here to recruit your teacher knife queen, but she refused. He is now going for the second best option, which is you. He wants you because you are her student. Bai Wei paused and then went on to say, it seems like you have made him angry. There is nothing I can do about that. 
I won't agree to a deal just because someone is having a hissy fit. Hansen shrugged. Bai Wei suddenly reached her hand out to Han Sr. Give it to me. What? Hansen asked, pretending to be surprised. Don't give me that. Hand over the undying bird nest. Bai Wei grunted. You can't take it away. Why should I give it back? Hansen felt sick. The bird's nest had been destroyed by the little red bird, so there was nothing to return. Whether I take it or leave it is my decision. And I'm telling you to give it back. Bai Wei's voice was cold. I would like to return it, but the item broke the last time I used it. Hansen opened his hands with the confession, looking apologetic. Hansen didn't think he could hide the fact that the bird's nest was gone, so he had no choice but to admit the truth. When Bai Wei heard his apology, she laughed. She smiled at him and said, I'd expect a better excuse from a thief. You know, the Bai family is not one you can so easily shrug off and ignore. Bai Wei didn't believe for a second that the undying bird nest, which was a deified item, had been broken. Not even a deified elite could break it. It is true. I'm not lying. Hansen looked at her very earnestly, forcing an innocent expression onto his face. Bai Wei sneered and rolled her eyes. She wasn't happy to hear about this. Fine. If you do not want to return it, pay back your debt by being my royal guard. Bai Wei poured herself a cup of tea, as if she was some sort of repo woman. Ten years. Hansen gritted his teeth as if he had just made a big decision. Bai Wei smiled clearly. She had a sip of tea before saying flatly, Serving me is just a way of paying interest on the loan. When you return the undying bird nest, then you can go. I will do nothing to stop you. How does that work? Hansen blinked. Bai Wei smiled. Give me the undying bird nest or be my royal guard. The choice is yours to make. I do not like forcing people into doing something they do not wish to do. He couldn't refuse both options. The nest was gone, but if he refused to go with them, he'd be forced to fight them. That was also beyond his abilities. Bai Wei sighed and said, Actually, you have no choice. Brother 14 won't give up easily. I bet that if you don't become my royal guard, he will do everything he can to bring you in close to him. His purpose, ultimately, is your teacher knife queen, mind. You will be used as a pawn or a tool to get to her. After pausing, Bai Wei went on to say, at least my desire for your service is genuine. I really just want you and not your teacher. It looks like I have no alternatives here. Hansen gave Bai Wei the tablet. Help me return this to Prince 14, then. Bai Wei wanted him, and Bai Tsonglong was incredibly annoying. Hansen would opt for Bai Wei if it meant he didn't have to deal with the irritating prince. Bai Wei took the tablet, then glanced around the garden. Where are your sister and daughter? They can come, too. I do not mind bringing on more people. Although they cannot be royal guards, I can promise you that they will be treated well. They say thank you, but no thank you, Hansen answered immediately, turning down. Bai Wei's offer. The extreme king trip would be a dangerous voyage. It was a good opportunity. But Hansen didn't want to expose Han Menger and the others to unnecessary risks. He was only going to bring Bauer, the Blood Karen, and the Little Red Bird. Bai Wei did not say anything. She pulled a tablet out of her pocket and gave it to Han Sr. It was a white tablet adorned with flowers the color of blood. The name Wei was written across it in a simple script. The tablet was a little plain, but strikingly delicate, too. Hansen knew that it was Bai Wei's Royal Guard tablet. He took it and twirled it through his fingers. What does the royal guard of a queen need to do, exactly? I won't be entertaining you everywhere we go or taking care of your day-to-day -day needs, will I? Bai Wei rubbed her nose and said, You think that members of the royal family spend their days lazing around? There are many members of the extreme king royal family. If we want resources, we have to fight for them ourselves. Otherwise, even a royal could end up worse than an extreme king noble. Are things really that competitive? Hansen asked skeptically. Bai Wei said, Father believes in survival of the fittest. That is what he taught us when we were young. We received basically the same treatment as the other extreme king nobles. We might have a few extra resources, but not much. If we want more, we need to prove ourselves worthy of it. If you do not work hard, you will end up worse than a commoner. It's challenging, but we are fairly rewarded for our efforts. You will get a share of everything that you earn under my employ. How much you gain just depends on how much you are willing to help. 